performers, but which three will advance to the finals? Who's the best? Find out on the Saturday Night Music Machine semifinals at 7.30, right here on Channel 4. Days of our lives and another world will not be seen today, but will return tomorrow at their regularly scheduled times. Now stay tuned for a special presentation of the Detroit Tigers home opener, next on Channel 4. It's been almost 200 days since they played a baseball game at Michigan and Trumbull, and here it is, opening day. Where is everybody? Featuring sportscaster Al Ackerman, a look at the essence of the streak. George and Al with a perspective from the broadcast booth, and we will look at the stars of the hottest Tiger start in decades. with over 200 offices across Michigan working together to be first and by your neighborhood True Value store. The more you've got to do, the more you need True Value hardware stores. We've got what it takes. Hello again, everybody. You know, Garland Jeffries wrote a song 10 years ago. It was entitled Wild in the Streets. I'm not sure whether he was referring to Michigan Avenue on opening day for the Tiger baseball season, but perhaps, well, he might have. There is something so exciting about opening day. It's kind of like uh, unwrapping a present for the first time. The newness of it just kind of gets to you like it never can again after that. Opening day sometimes reminds me of St. Patrick's Day, too, for lack of a better uh, lack of a better analogy, where it's an excuse, a justification to party down, and there are few bosses scrooge enough to stop everybody's fun. So wild, and of course, Michigan Avenue outside attests to that, which is perhaps the largest outdoor bar in the world today. Tiger optimism running very, very high. Of course, they are 5-0 off to a fantastic start, and we are just about ready to go. I had this dream last night, I got to tell you. As we came out here on the field to begin the show, I was uh, some security guards come through with their arms full of gifts, and they said, congratulations. You have just become the 1,000th man to ask for an interview with Jack Morris. I guess I am about the 1,000th guy. Come on here, Jack. I said, hold the gifts. I'll just take the, I'll just take the interview. Uh, have you tired of dealing with the media by now? Has it been a, the kind of assault that I imagine it has been? Well, Eli, I never really expected so much attention to be given to a guy just for pitching a no-hitter. I, <laughs> I won a ball game, and I, I've won a lot of games. I won 90 of them in the big leagues, and all of a sudden I get more attention than I've ever been given in my life. And, and it's exciting, but I guess it is getting a little old. What's the one question you haven't been asked yet? Can you think of one? Well, the only question that kind of went through my mind is, Jack Morris, do you think you could have hit Jack Morris the other day? And could I, you have? <laughs> I can hit anybody. <laughs> <laughs> you were two for two down in spring training or something like that, weren't you? I was two for four. I batted 500 for the third year in a row. <laughs> Jack, you're off to a great start, obviously, the way you finished last year. Do you redirect your goals at all from this no-hitter? Do you let your mind wander as to what you could possibly accomplish this year in terms of numbers and things like that? Well, the first part of the year, you're always optimistic. You're out there trying to win the very first game, then the second game, and you're just wondering where it can go from there. But you got to keep it all in perspective. We've got over 150 games to go yet. There's no sense getting, you know, overly excited so it affects us on the ball field. Uh, we know we're going to lose some ball games, but we know we're going to have some fun, and, and that's what we're doing right now. Jack, thanks a lot. Have a great year the rest of the way. Thank thanks you, for man. that interview. I appreciate it. You were holding out for me. George Kellen, Al Kaline are open the booth. Up in the booth, they have seen many, many opening days. We go up to them for their thoughts on the excitement and the purpose of it all. Eli, opening day is a big occasion. It's a big thing in any ballpark in America, but it just seems to me, Al Kaline, that opening day in Detroit is a big block party outside before the game, as Eli said, and then inside, it, it's something special in Detroit. Well, it is, George. Anytime uh, you come home to your, your fans, uh, the people that support you year in, year out, 
and you open up the Tiger Stadium. Something special about it. I got here a couple hours before game time, and uh, the people were lined outside. It was a great atmosphere. All everybody's feeling great about the, the start of the Detroit Tigers, and it's great to come back to the Tiger Stadium. Do you find a feeling here today that uh, people are more excited than before because they've won five in a row on the road, or is it just? Another exciting opening day. No, it's something different about this crowd. I don't know whether it's because of the great start by the Tigers, the great pick game that Jack Morris pitched, a lot of great publicity, a positive type of uh, publicity, but it's a different feeling with the fans here today. I know going through uh, uh, from the locker room to get upstairs here, everybody says we're going to go all the way in 84, and certainly uh, that's the way the Tigers hope it ends up. It's a long season to go yet. I saw Dan Petrie in the clubhouse a moment ago and Dan said I don't dare go out on the field right now. There's so much excitement going on. He just sort of wanted to stay back and uh, wait for a moment. Well you get your adrenaline uh, going real fast and they take a lot out of you and uh, he'll probably just wait until he has to be out here to go start warming up because whenever you see this many people uh, with a great positive feeling you want to do well for him. Well, another great opening day in Detroit. It's been that way for many, many years, some 60, 70 years. A lot of excitement here at the old ballpark. And Dan Petrie is going to pitch for the Tigers today. Now back to you, Eli. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Uh, we're going to take a break now. When we come back, we're going to look, although we've talked a lot about the elements of the Tigers' great start, we're going to look at them too. So stay with us as Tigers 84 continues. Looking at America's new pizza pizza generation. Because Little Caesars knows that everybody loves pizza. We give you a lot of pizza to love. We use America's finest meats, cheeses, and flour. So pizza pizza not only tastes great, it's great for you. Little Caesars Pizza Pizza. We give you a lot of pizza to love. No matter what part of the country you live in, you can enjoy a green and healthy lawn and garden with the help of quality supplies from True Value Hardware Stores. Give your lawn a clean, neat cut with the help of a Cerves 3 horsepower rotary mower. Then quickly trim tough grasses with this powerful weed eater gas trimmer. And prepare your garden for planting with an easy to maneuver Lawn Chief 3 horsepower garden tiller available exclusively at participating True Value Hardware Stores and Home Centers. straight wins of course don't happen by accident you know the oldest cliche in baseball is that it takes 25 men to win and that's very true and other than the few Tigers that haven't seen action yet it indeed has been a case of everybody doing a little something to produce victory most encouraging is to see how the question marks the new faces like Darrell Evans have come through Evans jumped off to a big start with the game clinching three run home run opening night and otherwise has a club high five RBIs worried about making a good first impression he has happily covered that while Evans is DH new guy Dave Bergman the other half of the San Francisco connection has been all he was hyped to be in the field helping out in particular as a defensive replacement in Morris's no hitter on Saturday a little nervous at first at the plate particularly at opening night he's gonna settle down and hit Meantime, Sparky's gone out of his way to get Willie Hernandez seriously involved as the bullpen stopper. So far, only Morris's no-hitter has kept Willie off the mound in every game. He's thrown his blazer in all four others and given up just two hits in five innings, and he's become the finisher, taking some of the load off Lopez. The two Latinos, Lanzaderos de Fuego, flamethrowers, to put enemy hitters in a Hispanic panic in 84. Barbaro Garbay busted Sunday's fifth straight win open with a pinch two-run double. Sparky raves about his hitting. By the looks of it, fast hands and an ability to spray. Barbaro could be dangerous. So far, Kirk Gibson looks like the brand new man we were promised. 
His K-line coached fielding has been solid. He has two homers already and three extra base hits. Ooh, watch out for a trim down and determined Gibby. Of course, it's taken the customary work of the proven stars to provide the performance base. Morris, without saying, has two of the five wins, as well as, for example, Lemon hitting 368 with five RBIs and more great outfielding. Trammell also hitting 400 with four stolen bases. Speaking of whom, we are here with Alan Travel. Alan, let's get this out of the way real fast. I notice you signed a two-year contract extension. What was the motivation to tie yourself up until 89? With well, the Jim Campbell and Bill Joy called me in the office during spring training, and uh, the offer overwhelmed me, and uh, I just decided to take it. So it was just two more years? Yes, it was. It, uh, I was signed through 87, and uh, they extended my contract. They didn't renegotiate. It was just an extension. Now, pardon me for saying, but every time I look at last year's stats and I see you fourth in the league in hitting at 319, my eyes kind of bug out a little bit. Uh, that was obviously a little beyond your expectations, too? Well, I don't really think that. Uh, I think I'm capable of doing great things, and I don't uh, see any reasons why I can't continue to hit well. Uh, who knows if I'm going to hit 319, but if I can hit 300 and get on base like I'm capable of, we're going to score a lot more runs. So far this season, every game I've seen, and it's been most of them, I'm really overwhelmed by the determination. That's a, become a cliche of sorts, but it seems like the Tigers are uniquely determined. Do you, do you feel anything thus far? Well, we've gotten off to a great start, and uh, everybody's feeling very confident right now, and hopefully it'll carry over. We know we have a long season, but it's also very nice to get off to a 5-0 start. I know you got to play it one game at a time. That's an old cliche, too. But don't you have to think about the streak, how far it may go, and things like that? Well, I think any time you open up, we've looked at uh, what Oakland and the Atlanta Braves did a few years ago. And we're looking at that. But you do have to take them one at a time. Uh, we like to get in the record books, just like Jack Morris did the other day. <laughs> but uh, you know, it's a long season, like I said. And we're just going to try to take them one at a time. Alan, thanks a lot. Thank Good luck to you. We'll be back with more, including Sparky and Alan Moore Tigers 84, after this. You know how hard we've been working on the antiques? Mm, that chair. And saving a lot here? And earning more. Right. And talking about our own shop. Mm. That's our chair. Honey. That's our shop. When over 200 banking offices across Michigan work together, saving has its reward. We're first of America, working together to be first. When you're looking for quality products at extra special prices, look no further than True Value Hardware Store's Tool Value of the Month. In April, get this master mechanic hacksaw for just $2.89. It adjusts to hold 10 or 12 inch blades in four different cutting positions for use in even hard to reach areas. During April, you can get this master mechanic hacksaw for just $2.89 while supplies last, wherever you see the Tool Value of the Month banner at participating True Value hardware stores and home centers. For mufflers, brakes, and shocks, Wearmaster guarantees it for you. The best price and a lifetime guarantee. Wearmaster guarantees it for you. Wearmaster. Well, shortly ago, near this very spot on the field, Sparky Anderson and Al Ackerman had a conversation, and amongst other things, they, of course, discussed the Tigers' great start thus far. Congratulations, Sparky. Uh, I, I know it, you get a little uneasy, and it's been reported that you are, but 5-0 is a, is a heck of a way to start the season. Well, you know, I, I don't get uneasy. I get... Uh professional I think when you're winning keep your mouth shut no don't, don't be getting too carried away because I've been on the other end you know I don't like that other manager or other players looking to hear what I got to say when we're winning so I, I don't say too much when we're winning I'll say more when we're losing than when we're winning well we've been talking a lot about the Tigers I, I gave you high marks for one thing that interested me you went into Minnesota and we know Minnesota is not one of the elite teams and you did what you have to do to be consistent winners you beat a team that you should beat now, Baltimore, on the other hand, went in, a favorite, and got themselves really kicked about. They're now, you know, four and a half games behind. It's early in the season, but that doesn't help their morale at all. Oh, no. And, you know, no team in this league. You can't go in any ball park in this league and expect to win. I say this. Alan Trammell said it the other day. It's a wonderful quote that I'm using. I'm doing a book, and it's a wonderful quote, and I wrote it down. April the 4th, Alan Trammell said, you know, to win, to be a winner, you have to want to. Well, if you'll do that every day, when you go to the ballpark every day, say, today I want to win. 
that today gives you that chance to know that you have to play as a winner, and the only way you'll do that is by working hard. Lou Whitaker had the other thing, which I thought tops. I'll never hear a quote as good as this. He said, baseball is fun. Play the game. Don't let the game play you. And I'm putting both of those in my book because you can do a story on Lou's, and I'm going to do one on that. I think Lou really took that beyond and meant life. You know, play the game of life. Don't let it play you. Speaking of don't letting it play you, I thought that Jack Morris always had the ingredients, the, the, the great natural ability. One thing that Jack had, and both of you and I discussed it, he would get down on himself and get very angry if he gave up a base hit. He has learned to control his emotions. He knows that he can't be perfect all the time, and it showed the other day when he pulled himself together under great pressure to get that no-hitter. Well, Jack's always been a great athlete, no question about it, but I think the thing that I marvel at now in the last two years, Al, is he's a great person. You know, I think when people are that good at doing something, if they don't have that other piece about them where they become a great person no matter what crowd they're in, if they're with children, they know how to be. If they're with grown-ups, they know how to be. If they're with the lawyer, they know how to act. If they're with the priest or a minister, they know how to act. If they don't have that part, they never have the true greatness. They, they might be awful good as far as statistics, but they never have that one thing. Jack has that now. I was interested, you know, as a, if you've been on the other end of it, Sparky, where somebody's pitching a no-hitter against you. Now, you've been there. Now, Garagiola, who's played, said... Uh, of course we have to talk about a no-hitter going on, because if you don't, the other team's going to remind them. What does the other team do to remind a man when he's pitching a no-hitter? Well, a lot of times they'll yell to him, you know, that he's got to... Well, it's funny, some guy was drunk. He leaned over in the seventh inning, uh, the top of the eighth. We were hitting. Jack was sitting next to Roger, and he just, I was down the bench further, but this guy leaned over and he said, Yeah, you know you're pitching a no-hitter. Jack said, Certainly I do. Sit back and enjoy it. <laughs> but the other... T you don't want to be embarrassed. You don't want to be on the other end of a no-hitter. Well, I have thought twice. You'll do hours. anything to break it up once. Well, sure. And we were twice in two weeks. Holtzman uh, got us, and then the other right-hander, I never can think of his name, pitched at Philadelphia. He had two home runs in the game, beat us 8 nothing. But we had him on two weeks in a row with that Cincinnati club that could hit a little bit. They had two no-hitters within two weeks. One final word, Sparky. I was glad it was on national television because I said on the air, I never knew how good the, the 76 Reds were until I saw them in the World Series. I never knew how good Roberto Clemente was. Now I'm glad that the rest of the country is seeing how good the Tigers are. I think it was great that it was on national television. Well, they're going to see a great team. This is, this is an outstanding baseball team. Congratulations, Sparky. Right, good thank start. you. Have Appreciate a good it. Eli? Thank you, Al. You know, uh, millions of Tiger fans today are not just hoping for their sixth straight victory of the season, but in the back of their mind, they hope they get to see a couple of perhaps scintillating plays or great catches in the outfield, something like that. 1983 had many, many of them, and let's look back at some of the spectacular plays of the season. saw Chester Lemon making that great catch against the Angels. You've been through 20 of these uh, season openers. You get a little excited? Yeah, you know what I get interested in? And I want to get to it quickly. 
I like to see the reaction to the lineups when they come out there. Jack Morris, I want to see the ovation. I also want to see what happens when the governor and the mayor come That's out. Right. <laughs> There'll be quite a crescendo here. And I think this is a rare opportunity, the only opportunity of my lifetime that I've seen opening day televised. And I guess we're going to go take the starting lineups as they're introduced to this crowd here at Tiger Stadium. Right? Okay, let's do that. Now, number 29, Marv Rettman. Number 20, 37, Rich Donnelly. Number 42, Wayne Terwilliger. Number 52, Dick Such. The trainer is Bill Ziegler. And the equipment manager for Texas, Joe Macko. Texas Rangers. And with perfect weather and an undefeated baseball team, it's a pleasure to introduce the 84 Detroit Tigers. Led by the manager, number 11, Sparky Anderson. <laughs> and the players in numerical order, number one, Lou Whitaker. Number three, Alan Trammell. Number eight, Marty Castillo. Number 12, Rod Allen. Number 13, Lance Parrish. Number 14, Dave Bergman. Number 15, Rusty Coons. Number 16, Tom Brookins. Number 17, Glenn Abbott. Number 19, Dave Rosma. Number 20, Howard Johnson. Number 21, Willie Hernandez. Number 23, Kirk Gibson. Number 25, Dwight Lowry. Number 27, Barbaro Garbet. Number 29, Aurelio Lopez. Number 30, John Grubb. Number 31, Larry Herndon. Number 34, Chet Lemon. Number 39, Milt Wilcox. Number 40, Doug Bear. Number 41, Daryl Evans. Number 44, Juan Berenguer. Number 46, Dan Petrie. And number 47, Jack Morris. The Tiger coaches this year, number 26, Gates Brown. Number 26, Gates Brown. Number 38, Roger Craig. Number 50, Billy Consolo. Number 51, Alex Gramas. Number 53, Dick Trzuski. The trainers, Bill Beam and Pio DeSalvo. And the equipment manager, Jim Schmeichel. The 1984 Detroit Tigers. In the outfield at the moment, presenting the colors today, the Joint Armed Forces color guard. The band out in center field, the Merle Alvey Band, under the direction of Joe Vitale. Now, ladies and gentlemen, will you please join Mr. Robert Taylor in the singing of our national anthem.
are just moments away from the ceremonial first pitch. Mayor Coleman Young and the Governor Blanchard are on hand, and we will have that when Tigers 84 returns. continues. Today's game is brought to you by Miller High Life, the best beer for the best part of the day. Welcome to Miller Time by Chevrolet. America is on the move and Chevrolet is supplying the wheels. Chevrolet and you taking charge by your local McDonald's restaurants, a proud sponsor of the 1984 Olympics, by Highland Appliance, everything you never expected from an appliance store, and by America's largest carpet retailer, New York Carpet World, the better carpet people. We are awaiting the ceremonial first pitch. Mayor Coleman Young, I believe, will be hurling with his receiver to be Governor James Blanchard. The mayor, in truth, has not gotten the warmest of ovations in the past years. Maybe we can equate that to the type of reception that Lou Whitaker gets when he comes out onto the field. But we're awaiting for this momentarily, and we don't see his honor quite in sight yet. As you heard the introductions, uh, Jack Morris, far and away, as we, Al and I were speculating, would get, had the uh, biggest round of applause. Jack doffing his cap to the crowd. He has certainly spiced or been the, the key element to this uh, five-game winning streak to start the season. The Tigers' record for consecutive wins is 13. Nobody's really talked about that happening. But here we see near home plate uh, is Governor Blanchard. I haven't seen whether he has laced up his uh, protective shin guards or whatever, but uh, apparently we're shortly going to have the ceremonial first pitch as we await opening day, home opening day, that is, 1984 here at Tiger Stadium. Uh, is that Vince Doyle behind him, Sonny Elliott, who I believe will be umpiring again? How he manages to turn that into a hilarious act, only Sonny can do. Dan Petrie down in the right field corner. Warming up, uh, ready to pitch before a capacity crowd of over 52,000 people here on opening day. It's gotten considerably warmer. It was quite chilly and nippy this morning, but the wind seems to have died down and the sun is starting to uh, beat, beat on us, and I think it'll be a very, very nice day for the Tiger opener. A couple of guys sprinting in the outfield. We're still waiting for Mayor Young to come out with the governor and get this first ceremonial pitch underway in the 1984 season home version to go. Dave Stewart will be opposing Dan Petrie today. Stewart, a big right-hander for the Texas Rangers, who they got last year in trade from the Los Angeles Dodgers for Rick Honeycutt. Honeycutt was somewhat of a disappointment for the Dodgers, whereas Stewart has turned into be a fine addition for the Rangers, a relief pitcher who now enjoys a starting role. Most of the fans are in place. Sun in the bleachers, the beach ball starting to go. We hope we don't have too many incidents of them floating down on the field this afternoon. Big crowd over by the Tiger dugout, as there always is on opening day. It seems like every reporter from every surrounding state comes down to see the Tiger opening day, get a few interviews, and just feel the flavor of it all. You see Sonny Elliott there with his catcher's, uh, I should say, with his protective chest pad about to put on. Not that he really needs it. The mayor uh, is not, doesn't have that deadly of a fastball. Dave Stewart lost his first game. He's 0-1. The stadium scoreboard tells us that he gave up six hits in four innings. Also gave up five runs, whereas Petrie is 1-0. He won the second game of the season in Minnesota when they beat the Twins. I believe the score was 7-3 last Thursday. After that, of course, they went on to Chicago. Wilcox won on Friday. Jack Morris with his gem on Saturday. We talked with Jack in the pregame show. Of course, everybody's talked to Jack in the last three days. As we say, he's done about 1,000 interviews, but he is not tired of it quite yet. And then... On Sunday, let's see what happened Sunday. The Tigers won their fifth straight game. Dave Rose Mago in four innings, Aurelio Lopez and Willie Hernandez coming on to uh, finish it up. Lopez getting the win in that one. And Hernandez, who has certainly been the workhorse thus far, pitching in his fourth game. He's pitched in every game except, of course, Morris's no hitter. And you get the feeling that hadn't Jack had a no hitter going, 
he would have pitched in that one also. Well, we were supposed to pretty much begin the ball game at 1.30. That's what time it is now, as we're still awaiting the first pitch, the ceremonial first pitch. Governor Blanchard and his umpire, Sonny Elliott, are here. I imagine we are waiting for the presence of his honor himself. The rumor was Tom Selleck, that famous Tiger fan, was going to be in town for this. But that apparently did not come to pass. Well, there seems to be some motion near home plate. The cameras are getting into place. And I think we are about to have that ceremonial first pitch. Sparky is out there with his lineup car. We don't see Doug Rader, the Ranger manager. of course in first place with a 5-0 record they have a game and a half lead over the Cleveland Indians the Indians really not picked to do much this year finish show and certainly the bottom half of the division are off to a pretty good start and down in last place the Milwaukee Brewers who have lost their first five games the mirror image start of the Tigers the most interesting early American League note of course has been how the Baltimore Orioles have lost their first four games and very few of them have been close they have gotten uh, beat pretty handily from their opening day 5-2 loss to the White Sox to where the Twins just up and swept them in Minnesota this weekend. Dan Petrie will try and get his second win. He'll be the second Tiger to have a couple of wins. Of course, Jack Morris says, too, Jack was named American League Pitcher of the Week to no one's surprise at all with an 0.56 ERA in that 2-0 record. We're going to go to John Bell now, the public address announcer. Ceremonial first pitch to get the 1984 baseball season underway. At home plate. At home plate, assisting, I guess, in umpiring this will be Sonny Elliott catching the governor of the great state of Michigan, the Honorable James J. Blanchard. And to throw out that first pitch, the mayor of the city of Detroit, the Honorable Coleman A. Young. Well, as usual, Sonny's giving him instructions. I do believe he knows where home plate is, Sonny. I think he'll, although the mayor has moved up a little bit this year. He threw one in the dirt last year from 60 feet, 6 inches. Here it comes from 50 feet, and it does reach the play a little on the inside corner. And there we have it. We are about to begin the 1984 season. Let's send it back upstairs to our play-by-play -play announcers, George Kellen, Al Kaline. Gentlemen, take it away. Thanks, Good afternoon, everyone. Well, it's opening day in Detroit. Everybody knows that by now. The stadium is full. We've just had the ceremonial throwing of the first ball, and Al, uh, the governor, was behind the plate. The mayor was on the mound. 
they booed them both, and as you said, they boo anybody that walks out there. It's, it's a tradition here. I, I would imagine just about every ballpark in the country, whenever a dignitary throws out the first ball, they get a very big round of boos. <laughs> <laughs> That's just part of opening day, and everybody's in a very upbeat mood here today at Tiger Stadium. The Tigers and the Texas Rangers getting ready to go to open the season here in Detroit. Dan Petrie's going to pitch for the Tigers. He won his first start of the year. That was in Minnesota. He beat the Twins 7 to 3, and it'll be Dave Sturt going for Texas. And we're going to be right back with Tiger Baseball after this message. Welcome. Working a charter, your days belong to somebody else, but your nights are all yours. Two Miller time. Now comes your time with the best beer you can find, Miller High Life. Bring your thirsty self right here. You've got the time we've got the beer for what you have in mind. Welcome to Miller Time. Your Metro Detroit Chevy dealer is taking charge. Chevy fever, Chevy power, Chevy style. Look beyond the ordinary. Gaze on reflections of driving pleasure. Capture the magic only Chevrolet creates with Camaro, Cavalier, and Celebrity. Chevy Fever. Coming at you. Chevy Power. Driving home. Chevy Style. Taking charge. Catch the fever. See your Metro Detroit Chevy dealers where today's Chevrolet is taking charge. Here's the batting lineup for the Texas Rangers. Leading off in left field, Billy Sample. Batting second, Buddy Bell at third base. Batting third in center field, George Wright. Batting fourth, Larry Parrish to DH. Batting fifth, playing right field, Gary Ward. Batting sixth, Pete O'Brien at first base. Batting seventh, the catcher, Ned Yost. Batting eighth, playing second base, Wayne Tolleson. Batting ninth, the shortstop, Curtis Wilkerson. Defensively for the Detroit Tigers around the infield, Bergman at first base, Whitaker at second base, Trammell shortstop, Howard Johnson playing third. Around the outfield, Herndon in left, Lemon in center, and Gibson playing right field. Lance Parrish behind the plate for the Tigers. And Dan Petrie going after his second win of the season. He uh, pitched the second game in Minnesota where he was a winner. Seven to three, pitched seven innings. Gave up five hits, three runs, two earned runs, four base balls, and had one strikeout. Dan Petrie has never pitched an opening day at Tiger Stadium. However, last year, April 12th, he uh, pitched in Yankee Stadium. That was the home opener for the Yankees in front of a record crowd of 55,579 people. And the Tigers were winners that day against the Yankees, 13 to 2. Dan's record, career record at Tiger Stadium, 30 wins, 16 losses. Despite uh, only uh, being 6 and 6 last year. His career record against the Texas Rangers, 5 wins, 4 losses. A year ago, one win and two loss. So Dan Petrie has had some trouble with these Texas Rangers. Great sunny day here at Tiger Stadium. The wind blowing straight in from right field. Probably one player on the Tiger team right now, which uh, it was overcast, would be Kirk Gibson, who uh, had some trouble here opening day. And this can be a terrible ballpark early in the season and late in the season playing right field. Dan Petrie on the mound for the Tigers, going for win number two in this 84 season. George? Well, we're ready to go, Al. Billy Sample will lead it off for the Rangers, followed by Buddy Bell, and then George Wright. Just a beautiful afternoon here in Detroit. You couldn't ask the weatherman to do any better by you. Bright, sunshiny day. Temperature is supposed to reach about 62 degrees. There is a breeze, a rather strong breeze, blowing from right field toward home plate. As we get ready for the first pitch in Detroit in this 84 campaign. And it's a strike. He got it over a good hard slider, and Petrie 
out in front of Billy Sample. They'll try to keep the ball away from Sample. He's a good inside fastball hitter. They'll throw him hard stuff and breaking balls away if they can. Another hard slider. Strike two. Billy Sample. Uh, off to a slow start. This fellow's been a good hitter everywhere he's been. Had some great years in the minor leagues. He's batting at 222 here in this young season. Might have been the best minor league hitter ever. He averaged in three years, 358 in three years. Yeah, he had some great years. And the two strike pitch coming up. That'll make it one and two. Tigers are off tomorrow. They play the Rangers again on Thursday, and it might be just another opening day on Thursday because Jack Morris is going to pitch in that one. Here's one hit deep down the left field line. Herndon near the fence, and he's got it. Al, he hung it inside, just what you said, and uh, he hit it pretty good. I tell you what, I, I believe that Sample thought this thing had a chance to go outside. You can see a curveball. Peaches uh, threw it inside, and he's a good inside hitter. Herndon makes a pretty good running play, but I thought the ball had a chance to be a home run. There's Buddy Bell with one out and nobody on. Buddy batting in the unfamiliar number two position for him. He normally bats three, four, five. And he hits it hard in the left field for a base hit. So Buddy Bell jumped on the first pitch and he drilled it past Johnson into left field. You can see Lance wants the ball outside. He throws it inside part of the plate and Bell rifles it. They were playing him off the line so that means that they want to pitch him outside but uh, Dan Petrie made a mistake and threw the ball inside. It'll bring up George Wright the center fielder. This fellow is a switch batter and he'll be batting left handed against Petrie. Maybe the best all around player on the on the Texas ball club. Pitch is low and it's one ball to right. Kansas City is at Baltimore tonight. Minnesota at New York this afternoon. Cleveland in Chicago tonight. Dan Petrie gets ready. There's a chopper toward first base. They're going to have to hurry. They got him. I didn't know whether Bergman really knew the speed of George Wright or not, and he played it uh, rather nonchalant at first. Tough play, a uh, play that Peaches could have probably taken himself. He wanted the little toss off for him, and you can see there just touched him on the shoulder. So the runner goes to second with two outs and the batter will be the designated hitter Larry Parrish. Parrish led Texas in home runs 26 had 88 RBIs. Buddy Bell the runner at second with two outs. Parrish big strong right handed batter. He's a third baseman by trade and has been playing the outfield mostly with this ball club of course with Buddy Bell here. Now he's the designated hitter. Yeah, Gary Ward moved him right out of the right field spot. One ball no strikes. Ground ball up the middle a base hit and that'll get a run in. Just out of the reach of Trammell into center field and a single by Parrish. The Rangers take the lead. We'll take another look at it as he hits it hard. Yeah, he's Dan. Dan just not does not have his good control right now. Again, Parrish, uh, Lance Parrish wanted to pitch outside. He threw it down the middle of the plate. He just has not had good control with his pitches so far in this game. So the Rangers jump off in front one nothing and the batter will be Gary Ward. They got this fella from Minnesota where he had a big year. A 
single by Bell, a bounce out by Wright, got the runner to second, then the single by Parrish gets the run in. And a pitch outside. Rangers have hit the ball rather hard off Petrie here in the first inning. It's a strike. Gary Ward tried to check his swing, went too far. Makes it one and one. And the pitch from Petrie. It's fouled away to the upper deck. One ball, two strikes. They're still coming in here at Tiger Stadium. Michigan Avenue is just jammed before the ball game, and a lot of those people are just getting into the stadium. One ball, two strikes. And he misses inside, makes it two and two. Petrie thought he had him struck out. Pitch just off the corner. Ball two and strike two. Now he needs to check that big guy. He had a big lead on the pitch before. You don't expect the parish to run, but if you give him a free run at it, he might go. Gary Ward. Just got a piece of it, and the count remains two and two. This fella here put uh, spent eight years in the minor league, so he's paid his dues to uh, be up here in the major leagues, and he's had some outstanding years for the Minnesota Twins. It's ball two and strike two to the left to the right fielder Gary Ward. He waits on the pitch from Dan Petrie. Three and two. Looks like the off-speed pitch, Al. Uh, Park ball, slip pitch, whatever that Petrie has been working on. I ball mentioned, three, strike two. I mentioned at the top of the show, George, he's had trouble with Texas. He's only five and four a lifetime against the Rangers. And, uh, you know, Dan's been a mighty good pitcher the last three or four years. Well, the runner at first will be moving on the 3 2 pitch. Here it is. He struck him out. He foul tipped it right into the middle of Parrish, and Gary Ward strikes out. They get a run on two hits. Strand a man. We go to the bottom of the first. Rangers won. Tigers coming to bat. For years now, we've been kidding Jim here about his eyesight. The fact is that Jim has the eyes of an eagle. Thanks, Boog. <laughs> Why, he's one of the first guys to spot light beer from Miller. Saw right away that light tastes great and it's less filling. Sure, all you have to do is read the label. It says light has one third less calories than a regular beer. I think you want this, Jim. Oh, yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> as I was saying, it's as plain as the nose on your face. I'm light beer from Miller. Everything thing. you always wanted in a beer and less. Oh, I don't believe this. Health insurance is getting more complicated and more expensive. You have to save the bills, figure out what they pay, what you pay. Pretty soon, you're buried in paperwork. HAP has a better idea that's a lot less complicated. With HAP, there are no deductibles, no co-insurances, no doctor bills, and no surprises about what's not covered. Health Alliance Plan. Nobody cares more. Nobody covers more. Here's the batting lineup for the Detroit Tigers. Leading off, Lou Whitaker, second base. Batting second, Alan Trammell, the shortstop. Batting third, the DH, Darrell Evans. Batting fourth, Lance Parrish, the catcher. Batting fifth in right field, Kirk Gibson. Batting sixth, Larry Herndon, left field. Batting seventh, playing first base, Dave Bergman. Batting eighth, Chet Lemons, center field. Batting ninth, the third baseman is Howard Johnson. 
defensively for the Rangers. O'Brien at first base, Tolleson the second baseman, Wilkerson the shortstop, Buddy Bell at third base, in the outfield, Sample in left, right and center, and Ward playing right field. Ned Yost is a catcher, and the big fellow on the mound, Dave Stewart, he has not faced the Detroit Tigers. He came to Texas in August. He was 5-2 and two when he was traded from uh, the Dodgers, and he was 5-2 and two for the Rangers after August. Big, hard-throwing right-hander. Started as a catcher in the Dodger organization. He does throw hard, Al. His fastball has been clocked at 95 miles per hour at times. And his first pitch is a breaking ball. One ball, no strikes to Whitaker. He'll be followed by Trammell and then Darrell Evans. Pitch is low and it's ball two and no strikes. This fellow has one of the good arms in baseball. He's had trouble with his control from time to time. Lou might have helped him out a bit. Ball two and strike one. Dave Stewart delivers low and it's ball three. Stewart lost his only start of the season. He only lasted four innings against Cleveland. He was a seven and three loser uh, in that game. Gave up five earned runs on six hits. Ball three strike one to the leadoff man. And he walked. Him. Whitaker is on with a walk to start the game. And the batter will be Alan Trammell. <laughs> Alan, like most of the Tigers on the five game road trip, has some big hits. Al off to a great start. He bats with a runner at first and nobody out. As Dave Stewart gets ready. Breaking ball outside. That's a hard slider from Stewart. He hasn't thrown but one fastball. And he is a fastball pitcher. Looks like he's been working out on a, on a slider and maybe a breaking pitch of some kind besides that. Ooh. That was his good fastball. <laughs> That's the hardest ball he's thrown yet so far today. He almost threw it right by O'Brien. One ball, no strikes at Trammell. He goes to first again. They got Dave Stewart from the Dodgers in a trade for Rick Honeycutt. Strike. He gets it over and it's one and one to Trammell. Dick Trzuski, the first base coach for the Tigers, and Alex Gramus is on at third base. And they've seen a few opening days. One ball, one strike. If he doesn't throw that pitch right where O'Brien's got the mid, he's going to throw it by him. Stewart gets ready. Well, they know Sparky likes to run, and he's got his orders. Keep Whitaker close. To give some protection to Ned Yost in case Whitaker takes off. Pitch is low. There goes Whitaker. Go to second, and he's in safe. That's a heads up play by uh, Lou Whitaker. The ball was not very far away. From the catcher Yos. 
I think Yost lost him, Al. He looked up and didn't see Whitaker. Then he saw him going. He made the throw, and it was too late. Ball two and strike one. And the pitch to Trammell. Ball three. Well, Stewart has had some problems getting the ball over the plate here in the first inning. He walked Whitaker on a 3-1 count. He has gone to 3-1 and one on Trammell. That's a tendency when you get into Tiger Stadium. It's such a uh, small ballpark. The pitchers try to be very fine with their pitches. And this is the first time Stewart has been in Tiger Stadium. And uh, he can see the sh uh, short fences. All three strike one. Runner at second. Nobody out. We're in the first inning. And he walked. Gets a walk. Tigers put him at first and second with nobody out. Doug Rader, the fine young manager for the Rangers, out talking to his young pitcher. Of course, coming to bat, Darrell Evans, who a uh, National Leaguer for many years. Stewart, as we mentioned, uh, was traded from the Dodgers to uh, Texas. He should know how to pitch Evans if he can get the ball where he wants to. Well, the conference is over at the mound. Tigers have them at first and second with nobody out and Tiger fans will get their first look at home against for Darrell Evans. Here's the pitch. Outside he just missed on the corner. One ball no strikes. He's been close with the last few pitches but. As Al said he might be trying to be a little fine in this ballpark. Stadium's Darrell Evans. 43,000 people here on their feet, and he hit a rifle shot way back up in the upper deck. Take a look at this swing. He's behind the count. He's looking for the fastball. He gets it. And I'm telling you, he stands at home plate and he knows it. It goes way back in the upper deck. Parrish is the batter and he takes a strike right down the middle. Well, Darrell Evans has just brought this crowd to its feet with a tremendous home run. Strike two to Parrish. I remember in spring training talking to Evans. He wasn't doing well. He hadn't hit a home run, hadn't driven in a run. He said, I want to do well for the people in Detroit so much. I want to do well. And he just did. This ball is going to be caught by the catcher. He hit him right on the fist, and Parrish popped it up. So there's one out here in the first inning. The batter will be Gibson. Gibby's had a couple of home runs here in this young season. He hit one out here in the first inning. And the batter will be Gibson. Gibby's had a couple of home runs here in this young season. He hit one in Minnesota and one in Chicago. Dave Stewart delivers. Ooh, he had a rip at it. One strike. The home run that Gibson hit in Chicago on Sunday was very much like the one Evans just hit. Never any doubt about it.
Pitch outside, and it's one and one. We're in the first inning. The Tigers three, the Rangers one. Both clubs trying to settle down from the opening day jitters. Ball two and strike one. the pitch from Stewart. Opposite foul. It'll be out of play. Ball two and strike two. Houston plays in Philadelphia today. They're in the second inning. No score. Gibby waits on the 2-2 pitch. Ball three. So far, Gibby has been very good at laying off the high fastball. That was a pitch that gave him a lot of trouble last year. So far, he's been able to lay off of it. There's a shot into right center field. Gibson makes the turn. He's headed for second, but now he comes back. Oh, he could have made it, but Gibby didn't give it a try. He made the big turn. He had it in his mind, but he pulled up short. Oh, he hits it like a shot. Trying to protect the plate, and uh, as everybody knows, if Gibby can hit the ball enough times, he will hit well. This would have been a tough play for the center fielder to turn to throw Gibson out because he was going towards right field. That'll bring up Larry Herndon. They could be running here because the uh, Cleveland Indians stole an awful lot of bases off this te uh, Texas pitching staff. Uh, the other day. Dave Stewart is ready. Stewart is not sure at all that Gibson is not going to be running. And a strike to Herndon. Larry did not start the game in Chicago on Sunday. He got into the game later, but John Grubb started in left field. He doesn't miss many ball games. He's waiting on the one strike pitch. at first one out three runs in here in the first inning which is over but low one ball one strike Minnesota's at California Boston at Seattle and Toronto at Oakland all night games in the American League one ball one strike started with a couple of walks and then the home run by Evans gave the Tigers the lead. Herndon has a rip at a fastball makes it one and two. After Parrish fouled out Gibson singled into right center field. And it's a ball and two strikes to Herndon. You see Gibson he is on go. He's waiting to pick the right time. He would like to go, but Sparky Anderson uh, gives all the signs. So nobody's on their own when they're stealing. He has to give every sign to Alex Grants. Herndon says you're taking too much time. It's been a long first inning for both Petrie and Stewart. Dan gave up a couple of hits and a run. Stewart has walked two. He's given up two hits. And another foul ball. This will be out of play. Rangers have a new catcher this year. 
We're so used to seeing Sunbird down there. He's been there so long. And they have Ned Yost. They got him from the Milwaukee Ball Club. Yost, pretty good defensive catcher. He doesn't throw. Uh, uh, of course, nobody throws like Lance Parrish, but uh, he's a good defensive catcher. He just did not get a chance to catch over Milwaukee because of Ted Simmons being over the last few years. Stewart is pitching tough to Herndon. He had to fight that one off to foul it back. Oh, comes a little bit three quarters motion, throws extremely hard, and he can be tough on right handed batters. He is tough. One ball, two strikes. We're ready to go as Herndon gets back in. We'll make it two and two to Larry. They play Herndon a little bit to right center field with this hard throwing right hand. George Wright is well over into right center and the left fielder extremely deep Billy sample and over toward left center. Can you imagine what those fielders of the Texas Rangers are going to feel like come July and August in that heat with a slow pitcher like Stewart on the mound? Yeah. <laughs> I lose 10 pounds a game. Well he got it over but low and it's three and two. This is the fourth batter this inning that He's gone to ball three on first two batters. He walked three and two on Gibson. He's singled. And now the full count to Herndon. And they'll run Gibby now. I saw Sparky give the old uh, go sign to Trzuski, and Trzuski went over and talked to Gibson. Ball three, strike two. And the pitch coming up from Dave Stewart. There he goes. And he walked. A strange thing right now. Let's pause here 10 seconds for station identification. You're watching Tigers 84. Now let George, Archie, and Barney make your afternoons the best time of the day with Detroit's favorite comedies. That's every weekday starting at 4 on Channel 4. I was going to say, Al, a strange thing. There's nobody throwing in the Texas bullpen. He's walked three, given up a home run, a single, and Still nobody throwing. Raiders says, well, he looks good on the mound anyhow. Looks good in his uniform. Looks like a guy sitting in the hotel lobby. It looks good in the lobby. Here's Dave Bergman. And a pitch outside to Bergman. Tiger fans getting their first look at this fellow. He made a couple of sparkling plays in the no-hitter by Morris. Gibson at second, Herndon at first, one out, and a strike. One ball, one strike to Bergman. Absolutely no stirring at all in the Texas bullpen. Dave Stewart is ready. He might have helped him a bit. One ball, two strikes. Fellow throws this hard. You're going to help him out now and then. Stewart checks his runners. Ball bounces away for a moment, but no advance. It looks like when he keeps the ball down, the ball moves an awful lot. Yost is having a lot of trouble with that pitch, and, and actually it's it's not a bad pitch. It's not too far from being out of the strike zone, but it must be sinking an awful lot. It's ball two and strike two to Bergman. Here it is. And a foul ball.
could be a good time for a, a steal here, uh, George, or attempted steal. He just thrown a pretty good fastball. He had a good rip at it. He might come back with a breaking ball and might catch him by surprise. Ball two and strike two, and there they go, and a drive into left center. Sample is there. He'll put it away, and there's two outs. Well, they had him running. Bergman hit the ball well into left center field, and Billy Sample ran it down. So it'll be up to Chet Lemon with two on and two outs. Chet Lemon, a big favorite here in Detroit because of the way he plays the game. He plays it hard all the time. A great outfielder. Gibson at second, Herndon at first. Two outs, three runs in here in the first inning. And a pitch in tight. Chester had some big hits in the Chicago series, a home run included. And it foul tipped it right off the bat. Pitch was high and tight, but it got the bat. One ball, one strike. A three run homer by Darrell Evans here in the first inning. The Tigers lead 3 1. And the 1 1 pitch coming up to Lemon. Ooh, look out. Ball two and strike one. I don't think it was as bad as it looked. Looked like a changeup. Off speed pitch of some kind. It's tough for a pitcher to hold on to the ball, get a good grip. It's cool here. You see there, he had plenty of time to get out of the way. Chet was uh, looking for something out over the plate. Ball two, strike one. Good rip at a fastball and fouls it back. Count is even at two and two to Lemon. If you just joined us, Whitaker walked to start the game. Trammell walked. Darrell Evans hit one in the upper deck in right field to make it three nothing. Parrish fouled out. Then Gibson singled. Herndon walked. Dave Bergman flied to left for the second out. Now it's ball two and strike two to Lemon. And he just gets a piece of it. They play Chester a little bit to right. We're going to play most right handed batters that way with this hard throwing right hander. Ball three. So the count goes full again. It's the fifth time here in the first inning the pitcher Stewart has gone to ball three. And there's the bullpen. Everything's quiet in the Ranger bullpen. Ball three, strike two, and the runners will be going. Here it is. He walk. So Lemon gets a walk. That's the fourth walk this inning. Tigers have the bases loaded with two outs. And the batter will be Howard Johnson. Well, that's going to have to get some action in the bullpen. I mean, you just can't let a guy go out there and, and hang himself. It's obviously he doesn't have... Uh, his good stuff. He's yeah, been here good, they come. He's been a good pitcher for a couple of years out on uh, with the Dodgers, and uh, he's just having some trouble throwing the ball. Howard Johnson will bat with the bases loaded and two outs. They might give Howard to go on the first pitch here. Although normally when you have the man with uh, your your bottom hitter up, they make him take a pitch, take a strike. But he might be swinging on the first pitch. It's in the dirt and a good block by Ned Yost. Uh, Dave Stewart's a little rattled at the moment, as you might expect from a pitcher who's walked four in the first inning. 
Howard Johnson has to be a very patient hitter now. He cannot go after anything. He's having trouble getting the ball over the plate. If he swings, he has to look for a ball in one area. And then if it's not there, take it. He got it over. Well, I don't know what uh, the story is with Yost, but uh, he's really been blocking the pitches instead of catching them cleanly. Tiger base runners. Gibson is at third base. Larry Herndon at second. Chet Lemon on at first base. And it's one ball, one strike to Johnson. Another good stop by Yost. Two strike one. Well, he doesn't have anywhere to put him. He's got to get it over to Johnson. Looks like Schmidt, number 24 in the bullpen. And a strike makes it two and two. Ball two and strike two. Tigers have picked up three. Still have the bases loaded with two outs. The pitch to Johnson. Well, he hit it a mile, but he pulled it foul. He hit it a mile and pulled it foul. Well, he really turned on a good fastball. Right at the end of the last couple of games of spring training, Howard started wheeling on that inside pitch, and he just opens up just too quick and pulls it foul. So we do it again. Ball two and strike two. And the count goes full again. Three and two to Johnson. Ball three, strike two with the bases loaded, and they'll all be running. As Dave Stewart gets ready. Good score. Interference. It earned it was rounding third base and Buddy Bell got right in his way. Well, you see Sparky out there now. He he wants interference call. It was ball four to Johnson. Ball got away from Yost. Bounced away. We'll take a look at the last pitch. See, they're running now on the on the play. The ball gets by Yost. It goes to his right. Now, right about this time, Herndon is rounding third base, and uh, Buddy Bell stepped right in front of it. Well, it's a walk, a run batted in for Howard Johnson. The fifth walk given up by Stewart, and Lou Whitaker will bat for the second time this inning and. It's going to be all for Dave Stewart. Well, this is enough to make a uh, a grown man cry. You have a pitcher with this ability not able to throw strikes, and a manager can put up with a lot of mis mistakes as far as uh, base hits and so on, but and errors even because it's part of the game. But just to be wild, five walks in one inning—you don't see that very often. No. We're going to get a pitching change right now. You see the motion to the bullpen by Doug Rader. And while there's a break in the action with this score, the Tigers four, Texas one. We'll pause for these messages. Your Metro Detroit Chevy dealer is taking charge. Chevy fever, Chevy power. Style. Look beyond the ordinary. Gaze on reflections of driving pleasure. Capture the magic only Chevrolet creates with Camaro, Cavalier, and Celebrity. Chevy Fever. Coming at you. Chevy Power. Driving home. Chevy Style. Taking charge. Catch the fever. See your Metro Detroit Chevy dealers where today's Chevrolet is taking charge. McDonald's brings you the morning news. A hot, sizzling sausage McMuffin. A McMuffin sandwich with a sizzle in the middle. Come on in and try it. McDonald's and you. McDonald's and you. It's sausage McMuffin and sausage McMuffin with egg. McDonald's and you. The good news is their prices. 79 cents for our sausage McMuffin, 99 cents for our sausage McMuffin with egg. Two great breakfast tastes only at McDonald's. 
Well, finally, a new pitcher, Dave Schmidt, now pitching for the Rangers. Uh, Dave was born in Niles, Michigan. Uh, he has appeared, and you can see his record of a year ago. Uh, that is uh, a little bit. Uh, he had uh, so, uh, shoulder problems, surgery on his elbow, and he got a late start in 83. So he pitched rather well for the Rangers, uh, even though his record was only 3-3. Three and three. Uh, he has pitched in one game, one inning, three innings uh, so far this season over in Cleveland. Uh, pitched three innings, gave up three hits, one run. His earned run average is 3.00. Good sinking fastball. Been used mostly in relief uh, by Texas. As I mentioned, uh, he was born in Niles, Michigan. Sinking fastball. So the Tigers can really break this one open with a base hit here by Lou Whitaker. Sweet Lou steps in with the bases loaded and two outs. Tigers have scored four times here in the first inning. Lou opened the inning with a walk, scored the first run for the Tigers. Herndon, Lemon, and Howard Johnson are the base runners. And the pitch. It's a ball and. Boy, Yost looked like he wasn't looking for a breaking ball. He boxed that one around. He better let the arrow that a glove of his, I'll tell you that. Looks like he's catching with a balloon. Everything's bouncing out. One ball, no strikes. Bouncing ball to second. That'll get him out of the inning. So Smith comes on to do the job. The Tigers get four in the inning. Only two hits, but they had five walks, and at the end of one, they lead it four to one. J.C. Penny and Levi's have gotten together to bring you quality sportswear for the games you play, like men's hooded crew neck sweatshirts, pants, and shorts and fleecy cotton or polyester blend. Men's sport shirts, t-shirts, and pull-on pants with Olympic graphics in popular colors at prices that earn a gold medal for value. J.C. Penny and Levi's. Together. Just for the fun of it, just for the heck of it, just for the taste of it, Diet Coke. Just for the style of it, just for the thrill of it, the real call the taste of it, Diet Coke. Just for the joy of it. Just for the fun of it, diet coke. Just for the look of it, from Coca Cola. Just for the taste of it, diet coke. Here's our upcoming TV schedule. We're going to be in Boston on Sunday of this week. That'll be at 8, April 15th, a 1:30 ball game. Then the following Sunday, we're going to be right back here in Detroit, the 22nd of April, for a 1 o'clock ball game in Boston this Sunday. And right back here the following Sunday against the White Sox. Tigers lead it 4-1 to one as we go into the second inning. We had a wild and woolly first inning. Petrie gave up a run on two hits. Dave Stewart. Had a rather rough first inning. He allowed only two hits. One of those was a big three run homer by Darrell Evans. The other a single by Gibson. But he walked five. In the first two he walked scored. Pete O'Brien will lead it off against Petrie here in the second inning. And he takes a strike on the outside corner. O'Brien, Ned Yost, and Wayne Tollison will be the batters. Good hard pitch to the outside part of the plate, and Petrie is out in front. And the strike two pitch. He got it. That's the off speed pitch, Al. Slip pitch. Whatever you might call it. This could have been a very crucial inning for uh, Dan Pitcher because of the long wait, 42 minutes. But you can see there an off-speed pitch. Looks like uh, from here, outside corner. 
I tell you, those four runs uh, might have just given uh, Dan Petrie a big sigh of relief, and uh, he can relax now and just pitch his game. That's Marty Springstead behind the plate, and he wasted no time. He waved him out. Ned Yost went for a breaking ball, one strike. Yost batting with one out, nobody on. Breaking ball, Parrish says, we're in the world. Marty says, I can't call them all strikes. One ball, one strike. That's his bread and butter pitch. A good, hard slider to the outside corner, and you don't have much time to decide whether it's going to be a strike or not. It's cold weather. You, you generally have... You want to get out in front. You don't want to get hit on the fist because of the cold weather. So you sort of jump at the ball. That'll make it two and two to Yost. Rangers got a run in the first inning on a single by Bell, and he scored from second on a single by Larry Parrish. There's a fly ball to left. Larry Herndon camps under it. So Yost is out on a fly ball. Out number two, and the batter will be the second baseman, Wayne Tollison. We're in the second inning. Two outs, nobody on. See how this little fella chokes up on the bat. Tells you he's going to punch the ball around, and he has great speed. Yeah, good base runner, stole 33 bases a year ago. George, he uh, started a season last year as a utility infielder. The regular second baseman got hurt, and now they can't get this fellow out of the lineup. And he checks the swing, makes it one and one. St. Louis at San Diego tonight. The Pirates are at Candlestick Park to play the Giants. This is foul. One ball, two strikes. Tigers have four runs on two hits. No errors. Rangers, one run, two hits. And Petrie's trying to get a one, two, three here in the second inning. One ball, two strikes at the pitch. I'm going to get two and two. crowd and will Petrie hit him right on the fist he popped it up landed just beyond the Tiger dugout a couple pretty good uh, wide receivers in college on this uh, ball field today this fellow here led the nation one year in, in receptions and of course Gibson the great career he had at Michigan State as a wide receiver a little bit difference in size yes. of the two fellows Here's the 2-2 pitch. And another foul ball. Tolleson went to Western Carolina University. Made little All-American. And he is little. He waits on the 2-2 pitch from Dan Petrie. Right down the middle, and he got him. Third strikeout for Petrie. He gets some one, two, three. We go to the bottom of the second. Tigers four, Rangers one. Welcome. You've turned the city over to the next shift. The rest of the night is yours. Two Miller time. Now comes your time with the best beer you can find. Miller High Life. Bring your thirsty self right here. You've got the time we've got the beer for what you have in mind. Welcome to Miller Time. Chevrolet, 
is taking charge with a new high output Camaro. A Camaro Z28 that did a test track 0 to 55 in 6 seconds. A Camaro with remarkable new handling. A Camaro with sure footed braking. Camaro. More beauty. More beast. And you. Taking charge. Here come the Tigers in the second inning. We get a look at the bleacher crowd. Uh, it's not quite that warm out there, <laughs> but <laughs> it is a beautiful day in Detroit. They may not be feeling the wind. In fact, the wind is blowing in from right field, so they're not feeling the wind. We're feel, feeling it up here in the booth, but it's still not that warm to be without a shirt on. <laughs> Trammell will let it off. Alan Trammell walked, scored a run his first time up. And then it'll be Darrell Evans and Lance Parrish. Tigers got four in the first inning and they lead four to one. Dave Smith delivers. Breaking ball is low. Dave Stewart started for the Rangers. There's a bouncer that's foul past third. Smith came on in the first inning with the bases loaded. Got Whitaker to bounce out. And the 1 1 pitch to Trammell. He checks his swing and hits it right back to Smith. So an easy play for the pitcher. Out number one, and the batter will be Darrell Evans. And he'll get a roaring salute from this sellout crowd. one of the great advantages of being a DH early in the season in Detroit. You get a chance to go into the locker room, uh, stay warm. This big guy had a three-run homer in the first inning in case you joined us a little bit late. And he takes a strike on the outside corner. And another one. Strike two to Evans. Quite a, uh, quite a contrast in styles between Stewart and uh, Schmidt. Schmidt's uh, not going hard, but sinking the ball in the corners. He misses outside. Of course, Evans at the moment will be looking for a strike, but in this ballpark, he's going to look for a lot of inside pitches. Ground ball to second. Collison picks it off and throws him out. So there's two outs. And the batter will be Lance Parrish. Lance fouled to the catcher his first time. His swing and fouls it away. Lance is only batting uh, 111 on a year, but he could have had four or five more hits over in Chicago. Hit the ball very hard, but had nothing to show for it. Pitch in tight, and it's one and one. Dave Smith. Pitching in relief of Dave Stewart has retired the first three batters he's faced. This is foul. Picked off by Alex Gramis. One ball, two strikes to the big guy. We'll make it two and two. Seems like every pitch Smith throws, he's turning it over, away from the left-handers and down and in on the right-handers. He struck him out. Pull the string on him. Perry strikes out, and at the end of two, the Tigers four and the Rangers one. McDonald's brings you the morning news. 
A hot, sizzling sausage McMuffin. A McMuffin sandwich with a sizzle in the middle. Come on in and try it. McDonald's has you. McDonald's has you. It's sausage McMuffin and sausage McMuffin with egg. McDonald's has you. The good news is their prices. 79 cents for our sausage McMuffin, 99 cents for our sausage McMuffin with egg. Two great breakfast tastes only at McDonald's. All right, we'll forward your records, Jim, and have a safe move, folks. The spirit of working together. We're first of America, working to win. We're growing stronger than we've ever been. There were over 200 banking offices strong across Michigan. Hi, right, welcome to First of America. We, we still record. care about the little things. We're first of America. Working together to be first. Well, a rather quiet second inning after a wild first inning here at the stadium. Rangers went out one, two, three against Petrie, and the Tigers came right back against Dave Smith and went out in order. So it'll be the new shortstop, Curtis Wilkerson, to lead off. In the top of the batting order, Billy Sample and Buddy Bell. Well, the Tigers and Rangers will have tomorrow off, and they'll play again on Thursday. And on Thursday, no-hit pitcher Jack Morris will be on the mound for the Tigers. Curtis Wilkerson. Now is the first time we've seen this yeah, little fellow. They obviously think an awful lot of him because they released Bucky Dent. Very fine shortstop. Here's a strike. Everybody shortens up on the infield. You can see Johnson. He is five steps or so in front of the bag at third base. Bergman's in at first. And a strike. He got the outside corner. So it's strike two to Wilkerson. Now they back up a bit. Not too much. Pitch is low and it's one and two. One ball, two strikes. We're in the third inning. Tigers lead four to one. And the one two pitch to Wilkerson. He fouls it away. I don't think Bucky Dent's caught on with him. Right? I haven't uh, read anything about it in the paper, no. They're carrying a pretty good price handle. Yeah. That, that does hurt. He got him right on the outside corner, and Wilkerson is called out on strikes. Well, Petrie going more and more to his curveball in the last two innings. Watch this pitch just flop on the outside corner. This is a new pitch for Dan. He has worked on it periodically at times, but uh, has not thrown it very often. Usually goes with a fastball and slider, but worked very, very hard on a curveball in spring training. There's Billy Sample who hit the ball deep back in the first inning. It was caught. He pitches high. Larry Herndon made a good catch into the corner on the drive off the bat of Sample. One ball, no strikes. And he pops it up. This should get back on the screen. Wind is blowing in this direction. Petrie has struck out four. In fact, he struck out four of the last five batters he's faced. He got Gary Ward to end the first inning, struck out O'Brien and Tolleson in the second inning, and Wilkerson to lead off here in the third. Howard Johnson playing off the line at third base now as a hitter is a pretty good indication that they're going to try to pitch you outside. And a fly ball to center. Chet Lemon flips his glasses down. So Billy Sample is out on a fly to center. And the batter will be Buddy Bell. Buddy Bell, what a player he's been over his uh, his career. Five-time Gold Glove winner. And, you know, you sort of hate to see a guy like this uh, with been a great player really play on some bad teams. 
was a good curveball. Buddy Bell had a single his first time up, and he scored a run. The only Texas runner of the game. Ooh, strike two. From a medium speed curveball for a strike, and then came right back with a hard slider to the outside corner. So it's strike two to Bell. One ball, two strikes. Buddy Bell was traded from Cleveland uh, for Toby Hara in December of uh, '78. the one two pitch another foul ball Toby Hara had some good years with the Indians and he now plays third base for the Yankees Buddy Bell was so sure that he was going to be traded over the winter months George he moved from Arlington Texas where where uh, the Rangers play and has moved back to Cincinnati where he was born and raised where his father played, played. for so many years pretty good hitting outfielder for the Cincinnati Reds Gus Bell Here's the one two pitch. That'll make it two and two. This fellow's not only a good hitter for average, he's got a little punch. You make a mistake inside and he'll jerk it out of here. Foul tipped it. Oh, he had a tough pitch to hit and he got a piece of it. Petrie struck out Wilkerson to start this inning. He got Billy Sample on a fly to center. And now the count is even at two and two to Buddy Bell. And the count goes full. All three strike two. George Wright would bat next if Buddy Bell gets on. And the payoff pitch from Petrie. Struck him out. He foul tipped it right into the middle of Parrish, and Buddy Bell strikes out. That's five for Petrie. We go to the bottom of the third, the Tigers four, and the Rangers one. As a relief pitcher, everybody thought I had it easy. See Pat here? He'd pitch his heart out for eight innings or so, and then I'd come in, toss three or four pitches, and walk away with a win. But I had to had train, to train just, just like the rest of us. Yeah, well, I still like to keep in shape, and I drink drinks light, light beer. beer from Miller. See, light's less light. filling, and light really, really tastes great. Will you just let me finish? Why? You never let me finish. <laughs> like beer from Miller. Everything you always wanted in a beer, and less. Let me finish that for you, Sparky. Oh. <laughs> You can find it at Hudson's. We've got your kind of style. If it's one of a kind of new design, come in, look around for a while. You can find it at Well, a four to one ball game. The Tigers in front as they come to bat here in the third inning, Al, and uh, we're taking this shot from our center field camera. Yeah, Tigers uh, jumped off to that big lead right in the first inning, but they can't sit back. Um, Schmidt is throwing a lot of off speed pitches, turning the ball over. He's not throwing as hard as Dave Stewart was, but Stewart had a lot of problems with his uh, control walking five men in the first inning. Tigers going to look look for some off-speed pitches off of uh, Schmidt. Gibson will lead it off. Kirk had a single score to run back in the first inning. Gibson, Herndon, and Dave Bergman will be the batters. Tigers got four in the first after the Rangers got one. Here's a strike. Schmidt continues to nibble away at the outside corner. We'll make it strike two as Gibby went for an off speed pitch.
game has really settled down and belongs to the pitchers all of a sudden. Pitch was very close. Missed on the outside. Gibson had a hard single his first time up. And he strikes out on a curveball that was in the dirt. So Gibson is out. Smith has retired five batters in a row. Now the pitching pr pattern that I read off of uh, Dave Schmidt is that he will not throw you two fastballs in a row. He might show you the fastball and then come right back with an off-speed pitch sometime. But uh, it's obvious from this point right now that his fastball is not his best pitch. Here's Larry Herndon who walked his first time up. Herndon having a little trouble getting on track here in this 84 season, but he'll hit. He's had two great years for the Tigers since coming over from the San Francisco Giants. And a strike. Dave Smith walked right out of the bullpen, throwing nothing but strikes. Strike two. Marty Springstead. Uh, has widened the plate a little bit. So. Yeah, he said 42 minutes for one inning, no more. <laughs> Pitch outside makes it one and two. Minnesota and the Yankees are underway. No score at the end of one. The pitch to Herndon. Still a ball and two strikes to the Tiger left fielder. Walked and was stranded at third base in the first inning. Another foul ball. Well, you don't get many good pitches to hit off this guy. And it gives you a lot of motion, and uh, you have a tendency when when a pitcher gives you a big motion and jumps at you a little bit, uh, you have a tendency as a hitter to to jump right back at him, but you have to lay back and wait. that'll get into the upper deck. Opening day in Detroit. Always an event in this city. Today is no exception. The weatherman has been most cooperative. A bright, sunshiny afternoon. Here's one hit into left center field. Well hit. This ball will go all the way to the fence. Herndon will stop at second with a double. He drilled it deep in the left center. And some very fine play by Sample saved that from being a triple. Yeah, excellent defensive play. You see there he throws a fastball. Larry looking for a breaking pitch, still able to hit his fastball. That's why he doesn't like to throw his fastball too much. You can see the outfield with good speed uh, all throughout the outfield with the Ranger Ball Club. Uh, made a good job of cutting it off and holding uh, Larry Herndon to just a two base hit. Dave Bergman will bat with a runner at second and one out. Bergman flied to left field his first time. There's a strike on the outside corner. Now, Berge should do rather well or has some pretty good cuts against uh, Schmidt because he's not a real good fastball hitter. They try to throw him hard, but Schmidt does not throw many fastballs. Here's a driver right at base hit. They're going to wave him in. Let's see. Here he comes. And the throw will go to second. A Berkman with a base hit. And the Tigers lead it 5-1. to one. Well, I happened to get that one out of my mouth just at the right time. Uh, you see there, he throws him a breaking ball. Berge is a good off-speed hitter. He hits it on the line. I thought uh, Ward had a shot at Herndon. He, he hesitated, uh, leaving second base, but uh, Ward decided to go to second base instead of throwing home. He's been a left fielder, Al, all of his life. Moved over to right. It might make a little difference. It could, but he, he's led the he led the American League in, in assists for outfielders. 
or both legs in assist. So he has a good arm. Looks like he was undecided about whether to throw home or not. Right field's tough to play. I'm telling. You. I know it, it is. is. <laughs> I know it is. <laughs> Chet Lemon, the batter. Chet foul tips it. Bob Amo down in our truck today, our technician for replays, celebrating his 51st birthday. All of these replays you see. To see a Bob Amel down in our truck. What a way to celebrate your birthday down under the stands in the truck. Well, I, well, that's true, but it's great to be at opening day. A lot of people can't make it or even watch, so uh, it's great just to be at opening day or be able to watch the game. The pitch to Lemon. There goes the runner. Here's the throw, and he's going to be out. Ned Yost put it right on the money. And Bergman is out. I think Lemon missed the sign. Well, it was a good throw, and it's the only way they're going to get him right on the money. Of course, the, uh, usually if the ball beats you, no matter how, if you make a good slide or not, you're going to be called out. Yeah, even if you tag him up around the belt, which yeah. it looked like he did, you're out. Lemon hits it hard to third base. Buddy Bell picks it off, and the inning is over. Tigers get a run on two hits. Nobody left, and at the end of three, they lit it 5-1. When you shop for carpet, you want well-trained, knowledgeable salespeople. You expect it. You're entitled to it. You get it at New York Carpet World. With your carpet installation, you want professional perfection. You expect it, you're entitled to it, and you get it at New York Carpet World. With all that, you might not expect the lowest price, but that's our aim, it's our creed, our policy, our single goal. The lowest price on every carpet every single day. This Trevira carpet, $6.99, unbeatable. See us for what you want in carpet. You can't miss at New York Carpet World. Metro Detroit Chevy dealers are making it tough on the competition when it's Ford Bronco 2 versus our Chevy S10 Blazer. And here's why. The S10 Blazer has InstaTrack. That means you can shift in and out of four-wheel drive on the roll. You can't do that with Ford. And the S10 Blazer with InstaTrack still costs $700 less than Ford Bronco 2. The Chevy S10 Blazer and the price advantage belong to your Metro Detroit Chevy dealers. Have you saved $700 lately? Here come the Rangers in the fourth inning. They'll be sending up George Wright, Larry Parrish, and Gary Ward against Dan Petrie. Well, Mr. John Fetzer, Mr. Tom Monahan, and Jim Campbell, and all the Tigers want to extend their congratulations to the Detroit Red Wing organization, their ownership, the officials, and the team for a most successful and interesting season. A uh, great year. Uh, they're definitely on their way up. And we'll add ours to that. Yes. Congratulations to the Red Wings. George Wright bounced to first his first time up. And he hits it hard right at Whitaker. He hit it like a bullet. Right straight to Sweet Lou. You can see Lou, uh, even though he's wearing a, a glove, that ball had the sting, hit him right in the pocket. That'll bring up Larry Parrish, who had a single and a run batted in back in the first inning. They got this big guy from Montreal. He was the regular third baseman at Montreal. Didn't Al Oliver go over to uh, Montreal, I believe? I don't know. We'll find out. We'll check that out. I thought Al Oliver and this guy played together. Here's a ground ball up the middle, but Trammell's there this time. Throws him out. I thought they played together in Texas. Maybe in the Hostetler deal. He came, uh, Hostetler came with him. For Al Oliver, I was right. Dave Hostetler came over. I should know you're always right. I should know that. Hostetler and Parrish for Al Oliver. Now Oliver, after two good years up there, has gone to the 
the Giants. Can't figure that out. I can't either. He's he led the awful league in fine batting. Hitting. Awful fine hitter. He's had about eight straight years of batting 300. I guess they were going to make room for Pete Rose. But Rose is playing left field. Who knows? Who knows? That's right. This is Gary Ward. We could call John McHale and find out. It's ball two and no strikes to Ward, who struck out his first time up. And a strike up the inside corner. Ball two, strike one. The two one pitch. I don't make it three and one to Ward. Petrie has not allowed a base runner since Larry Perry singled back in the first inning. Nine batters in a row have gone down. And a foul ball. Three and two. We've got a scoreless ball game going in Philadelphia. Houston and the Phillies, no score in the sixth. Ball three, strike two. Ward batting with two outs, nobody on. And he walked. That's the first walk given up by Petrie. A two out walk to Ward. And the batter will be Pete O'Brien. O'Brien struck out his first time up. Tigers lead it five to one. We're in the fourth inning. Pitch is outside. They play behind the runner at first base. They don't figure Ward to be running with the Rangers down by four. Pitch is low and it's ball two. Well, Petrie, who had not walked a batter, walks Gary Ward, falls behind Pete O'Brien, ball two, no strikes. Now, Pitcher has a tendency to have be a little bit more careful when he gets to the middle of a batting lineup. He can go after the little guys, the guys that get on with base hits. But when, you, three. when you get guys who can hit the ball in the ballpark, they have a tendency to be a little bit too careful. He got the first two batters this inning. George Wright hit a screaming line drive at Whitaker for the first out. Parrish bounced the shortstop. And he lost Gary Ward on a 3-2 pitch, and he has fallen behind O'Brien. Ball three, no strikes. Three and oh, and he throws it right down the middle. Ball three, strike one. He looks down to third, but you know they'll turn him loose with this short right field fence. Give him a chance to swing away at it. It's outside and O'Brien gets a walk. Two walks in a row and Petrie is in a bit of a jam as Roger Craig makes his way out of the dugout. Well, Roger comes out of the dugout. Usually, it's just to settle his pitchers down. He's not going to give him any kind of, a, uh, you know, information and, and uh, things of that nature. He just wants to say, hey, uh, just take your time now. Okay, Al, we'll pause 10 seconds for station identification. You're watching Tigers 84. 
Now find out how you can help choose the Music Machine Entertainer of the Year. That's on the Saturday Night Music Machine semifinals, Saturday at 7.30 on Channel 4. Well, he's going to have to get Ned Yost with two on and two outs. He flied to left field his first time up. And he takes a strike. Yost had six home runs a year ago. He did not play very much at Milwaukee. But he does have some power. One strike to Yost. Two on, two outs. And he fouls it away. So it's strike two. Rangers got a run in the first inning off Petrie. Buddy Bell single with one out. Went to second on a bounce out by Wright. And then he scored on a single by Parrish. Then he retired nine batters in a row before he walked Ward and O'Brien here in the fourth inning. And it's strike two to Ned Yost. And he got it. But breaking ball down and away. Yo strikes out. That's number six for Petrie. We go to the bottom of the fourth. The Tigers five, Texas one. Chevrolet announces a major price reduction, all the way down to $5,990 on our tough Chevy S10 short wheelbase pickups. A reduction of over $400. And that's not all. Special factory incentives to dealers make it possible for them to pass along up to $500 on all new S10 pickups and maxi cabs if you take delivery out of stock by May 31st. It's a great time to save on a tough Chevy S10 pickup. See your Chevy dealers now. Here's to good friends. Terrific reunion. Yeah. The last time we were here, we made history. I just kind of special. I stole that ball. I made the pass. I made the shot. Make that shot again. We'll buy you a low and rock. The beer will pour. Hey, what can I tell you? We still got it. Never lost it. Let it be low and brown. This copyrighted telecast is presented by the authority of the Detroit Baseball Club and is intended solely for the private, non-commercial use of our audience. Any use or reproduction of this game Here come the Tigers in the fourth inning. Howard Johnson will lead it off, followed by Lou Whitaker and then Alan Trammell. You know, Al, Pete Gammons, Peter Gammons, had a very good article in the Sporting News. He said, in case you don't realize how good Alan Trammell really is, if you want to compare the stats of Trammell and Robin Yount, who most people call the best shortstop in baseball, after six years, Trammell is leading Yount in every department. Batting average, runs scored, home runs, runs batted in, slugging percentage, Least errors. Is that a pretty good set of stats? That is outstanding. And I never would have believed that he would be leading him uh, in home runs. Trammell has 42 home runs and Yunt has 20 as 34. Strike two to Howard Johnson. 280 batting average. Against a 270 batting average, lifetime. Here's the strike two pitch to Johnson. Pitch is off the corner. Trammell made 93 errors, has made 93. Yant has made 178. Ooh, it's double. And he struck him out. Howard Johnson strikes out on that off speed pitch. Tigers continue to be well out in front of Dave Schmidt. There is one department they're tied in. They each have 303 runs batted in. Here's Whitaker. Pitch off the corner. 
Anytime you see that fastball from Smith, he's going to show it to you, but not get it over the plate where you can jump on it. Fly ball down the line and left. Here's a long run by Billy Sample. He's there and makes the catch. Billy Sample ran it down near the line in left field. Out number two, and the batter will be Trammell. Allen walked, scored a run in the first inning, and he bounced to the mound his second time up. Alan Trammell just had his contract extended through the 1989 season. So barring an injury, the Tigers are set at shortstop for a long, long time. There's a strike. Allen is batting 381 in this young season. Ball two, strike one, and a breaking ball over first strike makes it two and two. Scoreboard tells us that he led the Tigers with 30 stolen bases last year. Ball two and strike two. Here's one hit in the left. Way back. Sample is near the fence, and he's going to catch it. Trammell hit it deep in the left field, and Billy Sample, with his back to the fence, made the catch. At the end of four, the Tigers five, the Rangers one. Working at Charter, your days belong to somebody else, but your nights are all yours. Two Miller time! Now comes your time for the best beer you can find, Miller Highlight. Bring your thirsty self right here, you've got the time we've got the beer for what you have in mind. Welcome to Miller time! The people of Michigan. They haven't forgotten how to smile, and we're proud to be part of that smile. We're Delta Dental Plan, Michigan's largest group dental plan. But we didn't become the leader on size alone. Delta has always led the way in relating to people's needs. That's why our group plans are as individual as the people we serve. That's why these people are smiling all over Michigan. Delta, we're number one for a number of good reasons. Tigers 84 continues, brought to you in part by your Metro Detroit Chevy dealers. When buying a new car or truck, remember, the advantage belongs to your Metro Detroit Chevy dealers and by J.C. Penney, your official store for Levi's Olympic wear. Off for the Rangers in the fifth inning. Curtis Wilkerson to follow, and then Billy Sample. Tigers... Five, Rangers one as the Rangers come to bat here in the fifth inning. Right to the mound. He hit it sharply right into the glove of Petrie. So one pitch and one out in the fifth inning. The batter will be the little shortstop Wilkerson. Curtis was called out on strikes his first time up. The fellas only played three years of uh, professional baseball. He impressed somebody in spring training. Doug Rader and company. Here's a line drive hit softly into the glove of Johnson at third. Howard Johnson thought it was hit hard at first, and he had to wait for it to get there. They excuse it right off the end of the bat. Howard goes down on one knee almost, and then finally uh, the ball gets to him. So two pitches and two outs. Billy Sample says uh, maybe I better take one. Just Doug Rader. And I think he might be talking to his young man about uh, 
Yeah, you got to go up there and take a couple pitches. I remember Al very early in my career here in Detroit when I was hitting against a pitcher. I swung at the first pitch and bounced at the third or somewhere and I came back to the dugout and Steve O'Neill said have you ever seen that pitcher before and I said never in my life. He said I believe I'd look at a couple of them without swinging at the first pitch. This one is foul outside third. Well, that's one of the theories that Ted Williams had for forever whenever he had never seen a pitcher or faced a pitcher before he'd always take the first pitch. He always wanted to know how hard he was throwing. Billy Sample has flied to left and flied to center in two trips. Pitch is high. One ball, one strike. Exit ball two and strike one. Texas has some speed on their ball club. Uh, Billy Sample stole 44 bases in 83. A strike on the outside corner. You got to believe that Tolerson and Wilkerson can run. You look at them, you know they're going to run. Ball two and strike two. And the pitch from Petrie. He pops it up. Lou Whitaker is taking charge in the center of the diamond. He puts it away. Another one, two, three inning for Petrie. Nothing across. And at the end of four and a half innings, the Tigers five and the Rangers one. I always take the train because I'm afraid of flying. Me? Afraid? Nah. I take the train because it's the best way to enjoy light beer from Miller. Rolling through the Rockies and all across the Midwest, nice let's filling. And it tastes great coast to coast. That's why I take the train, not because I'm scared of anything. Hey, what happened to the light? Light beer from Miller. What's Everything you always wanted in a beer. And less. I went... <laughs> Baby, I'm a little afraid of the dark. <laughs> <laughs> Go forward your records, Jim, and have a safe move, folks. The spirit of working together. We're first of America, working to win. We're growing stronger than we've ever been. And over over 200 banking offices strong across Michigan. Hi, welcome to First of America. We have all We your still records. care about the little things. We're first of America, working together. Darrell Evans is going to lead it off, and Chuck says we're going to look at his home run, Al, right here. He had a three-run homer in the first inning. Yeah, he was ahead of the count. He got a fastball, obviously looking for it, and there was no question once uh, he left the bat, he stood at home plate, clapped a few times. What a way to start opening day at Tiger Stadium. A three-run blast put the Tigers in front. They were behind 1-0 at the time. They picked up another run in the first inning, another run in the third, and they led it five to one as Evans leads off here in the fifth inning. Evans, Parrish, and Gibson will be the batters. And a strike on the outside corner. This fellow Smith has done a good job. He's given up two hits, back-to-back -back hits, a double by Herndon and a single by Bergman. And that's been it. He has struck out three since coming on. Got Evans to bounce to second base. There's the off-speed pitch. He'll get you out in front. One ball, two strikes. I think that's Hanky. H-E-N-K-E. The one-two pitch to Evans. He taps it slowly towards second. So Darrell is out to start the Tiger fifth. And the batter will be Lance Parrish. He brought Smith on in the first inning. He might not want him to go too long in this weather. It's not that bad, but it's a little bit on the cool side. Well, the Yankees got two and they lead Minnesota two nothing at the end of three. 
Harris checks his swing. He hasn't had a good swing today. Stewart hit him on the fist, popped him up in the first inning. Smith struck him out in the second inning. And a pitch low. One ball, one strike. Tigers have five runs on four hits. Rangers one run on two hits. Bouncer to third. Buddy Bell with a long throw. That's out number two in the fifth inning. And the batter will be Gibson. He's going at it. Getting a chance to loosen up for the Detroit Tigers. Abbott did not pitch very often in spring training in regular games, but he got a lot of innings pitched in B games. There's Gibby, who had a base hit, scored a run in the first inning, then he struck out in the third. He's batting with two outs, nobody on. That may be the last fastball he'll see. It was over, but high. A strike. Looks like a little screwball, Al. Well, something off speed, and I don't think today yet he has thrown two fastballs in a row. One ball, one strike, and a bouncer towards first. Easy play for O'Brien, an easy inning for Dave Smith, and at the end of five, the Tigers five, Texas one. If an Egg McMuffin sounds good to you, listen to the sound of our two sausage McMuffin sandwiches, both on toasted English muffins with melted cheese and a mouth-watering sizzle to fill up the middle. It's McDonald's Sausage McMuffin and Sausage McMuffin with Egg. If you think they sound good, wait till you taste them. And wait till you see their prices. 79 cents for our Sausage McMuffin, 99 cents for our Sausage McMuffin with Egg. Two great breakfast tastes only at McDonald's. Just for the fun of it, just for the heck of it, just for the taste of it, Diet Coke. Just for the style of it, just for the thrill of it, the real call, the taste of it, Diet Coke. Just for the joy of it, just for the ah, just for the fun of it, Diet Coke. Just for the look of it, from Coca-Cola, just for the taste of it. Five to one, the Tigers lead as the Rangers come to bat in the sixth inning. Greg Reynolds has just hit a home run for Houston in that ball game against the Phillies. It was a nothing nothing game in Philadelphia, and Greg Reynolds, the Houston shortstop, has hit a home run. Willie Randolph. Hit a home run against Minnesota with one on in the first inning, and that's the 2-0 lead they have over the Twins. A lot of games under the lights in both leagues tonight. It's going to be cold in a few places playing at night. I think the White Sox are playing at home. I think so. At night. They are. They, hope, uh, they play against Cleveland tonight. Buddy Bell will lead it off. Buddy Bell, George Wright, and Larry Parrish here in the sixth inning. The Tigers lead by four. And a foul ball. It'll get back on the roof. Buddy Bell had a single and he scored a run in the first inning. Then he struck out his second time up. He hits it on the ground to short. Big hop to Trammell, and he's out. Buddy Bell is out, short to first to start the sixth inning. And the batter will be George Wright. George Wright is 0 for 2. He bounced to the first baseman. That set up the Texas run. It moved Buddy Bell down to second, where he scored on a single by Parrish. Then his last time up, he hit the ball hard, right straight to Whitaker. And we get a 
camera shot from our center field uh, camera will see how the shadows now are coming into play as far as making it more difficult for the hitters to hit hit and see the ball. Pitch is low and it's one ball. That's see the better, shadows right there. That's, that's a better mean. shot there. You can see how the contrast as far as coming out of the sunshine into the shadows. Yankee Stadium might be the worst for this. Boy, it gets very difficult, especially late in the year in New York. Ball two, no strikes to George Wright. Rangers batting in the sixth, one out, nobody on. Tigers five, Texas one. Bouncer to first, Bergman, ooh, he with the Golden Glove picks it off. He came over here touted as a fine defensive first baseman, and he's done nothing to dispel that theory. Now, one thing I like about him, he was going to go down and block the ball because if he should happen to knock it down, still have a plenty of time to toss it to the pitcher. The batter is Parrish. Larry Parrish will bat with two outs, nobody on. He had a base hit. Batted in a run in the first inning, and then he bounced out to shortstop in the fourth. Lamps Parrish behind the plate. Larry Parrish the batter, and they could pass for twins. They're about the same size. Pretty good bookends. Yeah. <laughs> How about linebackers? <laughs> Here's a strike. One ball, one strike. This big fellow is batting 364. He's batted in six runs on the season. So he's been there punch so far. And he has today. He's batted in the only Texas run. Ball two, strike one. Parrish, the designated hitter. He played in right field last year, but as Al Tozzi lost his job this spring to Gary Ward, he hits it towards shortstop. Here's the throw from Cromwell. But Petrie gets some one, two, three. Nothing across. We go to the bottom of the sixth. It's still the Tigers five. So this is the new log cabin. Thanks for giving me a hand. Hey, what are friends for? You're good, good friends. Tonight's kind of special. Try it this way. The beer we'll pour says something more somehow. Looks like we're about done, huh? Not yet, you're not. Tonight, tonight. Not a bad day's work. Next weekend, we put in the pool. Let you know in brown. My dad just bought a Honda Accord. My dad bought a Chevy Cavalier from the Metro Detroit Chevy dealers. Dad's Honda is front wheel drive. So does our Chevy Cavalier. And fuel injection. Fuel injection? You know what else? A new bike in the trunk. What? Yep, dad bought it with part of the money he saved. The Cavalier cost $2,000 less than the Honda Accord. Why? Because the Metro Detroit Chevy dealers have the price advantage. You hear that, dad? Tigers 84 continues, brought to you in part by Ballpark Franks, the hot dogs that plump when you cook them, and Grillmaster, the world's most distinguished chicken frank, and by Highland Appliance, everything you never expected from an appliance store. Well, we have a new pitcher for the Rangers, big fella, Tom Henke, 6'5", 215 pounds. He has made... Two appearances so far this season have been roughed up quite a bit. He has pitched one and a third innings, allow one hit, four runs. He was 1-0 and oh a year ago with Texas. He spent most of the year up until September with Oklahoma City, where he was 9-6. and six. As you can see there, a big fella. Throws the ball hard. Obviously, uh, must have been wild in that first outing of his because he probably gave up a three-run homer which built his 
earned run average up to 20.25 in just two games. So I would imagine the Tigers are pretty uh, happy to see Dave Schmidt out of the game. Yeah, they didn't do much with Smith. A double by Herndon, a single by Bergman that got in a run, and that was the extent of it. That's the only two base runners they had against Smith. So Herndon will lead off here in the sixth. Herndon, Bergman, and Chet Lemon against the big right-hander Tom Hinkey. And a pitch outside to Herndon. Larry has walked, doubled, and scored a run today. And a fly ball hit to right. Gary Ward is there. He'll make the catch. So Herndon is out. And the batter will be Dave Bergman. The game has really settled down after the first inning. Petrie was a little shaky. He gave up a run on two hits. Dave Stewart was more than shaky. He gave up four runs on two hits, won a three-run homer, and he walked five before he left the ball game. But since then, the Tigers have had only two base runners. The Twins have had two. One strike to Bergman. Batting with one out, nobody on. And a pitch low. Dave Bergman flied to left, then he singled to bat in a run back in the third inning. Fly ball to center. Easy play for right. That's out number two in the sixth, and it'll bring up Chet Lemon. spot in the world to bat is with two outs nobody on. Ooh, he hit him. Just got a piece of it. I was going to say Al batting with two outs nobody on. I used to try to pull the ball or at least into the corner something for an extra base hit because otherwise it's going to take three hits to get a run in normally. But Lemon is hit by a pitch ball. He's at first with two outs, and the batter will be Howard Johnson. Howard walked, drove in a run in the first inning. He walked with the bases loaded, then he struck out in the fourth. Howard slammed one deep into the upper deck foul by about 20 or 30 feet with the bases loaded in the first inning. Here's one over the head of the catcher and down to second goes Lemon. It'll be a wild pitch charged against Hinky. Now this is a tough pitch for a uh, for a catcher. You can see he gave a low target and just threw the ball completely over his head. The ball obviously must have slipped out of his hand. So Lemons at second with two outs. And it's one ball to Johnson. Howard's been hitting the ball hard. In Minnesota, he just missed a home run. He slammed it against the top of the fence. Hit one deep here today with the bases loaded. Had a base hit in Chicago that drove in a run. This may be his last time at bat Tom Brookins begins to throw in the Tiger bullpen. There's a strike. Ball two strike one. Philadelphia three Houston one there in the eighth inning. Johnson waits on the two one pitch. Ball three. That's Nolan Ryan pitching for Houston. It would have been quite a matchup if Carlton Fist, I mean Carlton, uh, Steve Carlton could have been pitching for the Phillies. Ball three, strike one, runner at second, two outs. It'll make it three and two.
That's John Denny, number 40, pitching for the Phillies against Ryan. Another pretty good matchup. He was the Cy Young Award winner last year. Ball three, strike two, and the payoff. He walked. But Johnson gets a walk. Tigers have him at first and second with two outs, and the batter will be Lou Whitaker. And Lou is looking for his first hit today. He has walked, scored a run, bounced out, and fly to left. Lou batting at 217 in this young season. He hits it foul down the left field line. Whitaker had a big hit on Sunday against the White Sox. He drove in the go-ahead run, and the Tigers were never headed after that. Lou's swinging the bat like he's trying to hit the ball to left field uh, in the hole at, at third base. One strike to Sweet Lou. That'll make it one and one. See Hinky trying to turn the ball over, twist it around a bit. One ball, one strike. center backing up is George Wright and he makes the catch so the Tigers threaten but fail to score and at the end of six they still lead it 5-1 it's the opening week of baseball folks and fans all over the country are heading for their ballparks me dad I've been looking forward to this for a long time yeah me too I can't believe it we're setting an attendance record here today because now, during Ballpark Frank's season opener sale, specially marked packages of Ballpark Franks have been marked down. During the opening week of baseball, you can get the Franks that float when you cook them for a whole lot less. Hurry where they last, the Ballpark Frank season opener sale for a perfect day at the plate. The fans can really be proud of the ball club that we have, the, the team that we're going to put on the field. We have so much talent, uh, especially in the starting lineup, that I don't think we could, anybody could put a better starting eight on the field as we we have and uh, I think that the key for us is just to stay healthy and to play good consistent baseball and I think it's going to be really exciting for the Detroit Tiger fans this year and I certainly hope that we can do the things that everybody expect us to do because we certainly going to try. The Tigers take on the Red Sox Sunday afternoon at 1.30. Here's our upcoming TV schedule. We're going to be in Boston on Sunday April 15th. That's a 1.30 ball game. And the following Sunday, April 22nd, we'll be back here at Tiger Stadium at 1 o'clock against the White Sox. So Boston and Old Back Bay this Sunday. The following Sunday, back in Tiger Stadium. New third baseman now. Yeah, Tommy Brookins coming in in place of Howard Johnson, defensive reason uh, for Sparky Anderson and Tigers. Actually, third base has not had very many... Uh, very many plays today. Only I think only one line drive to uh, Howard Johnson plus a base hit by a Buddy Bell in the first inning. Gary Ward will lead it off. Ward, O'Brien, and Ned Yost will be the Ranger batters. Tigers five, Texas one. We're in the seventh inning. Gary Ward struck out his first time up. Then he walked in the fourth inning. Takes a strike from Petrie. Gary Ward played with the Minnesota Twins last year. Ooh, good breaking ball. Strike two. Tigers are off tomorrow. They will play again on Thursday against the Rangers. And Jack Morris will be the Tiger pitcher against Frank Tanana. Pitch was low and it's one ball, two strikes. Yeah, 
Dan Petrie getting ready for the pitch to Ward. Exit two and two. And we had a shot of the bullpen, Baron Gear and Abbott throwing. I don't believe that uh, they will be going into the game. Uh, they have to get their work in. Uh, there's a day off tomorrow. So they're just getting some throwing time in the bullpen. There's a base hit in the center field. Gary Ward rips it over the head of Whitaker in the right center. And that's the first hit off Petrie since the first inning. A leadoff single here in the seventh by Ward. The batter will be Pete O'Brien. O'Brien struck out in the second. He walked in the fourth inning. at first with nobody out in the seventh. And a fly ball into shallow left. It's going to be a long run for Herndon. He's near the line and he'll put it away. A towering fly ball off the bat of Pete O'Brien is out number one. we will bring up Ned Yost. Smith Yost flied to left and struck out. He's 0 for 2. Baltimore plays tonight, Al, at home against Kansas City. Baltimore has not been able to win as yet. They lost on opening day at home against the White Sox. They went into the Metrodome and lost three straight to the Twins. Well, they tried again at home tonight against Kansas City. The pitch to Yost. Down low and it's one and one. A big crowd on hand as you might imagine a sellout here at Tiger Stadium on opening day in Detroit. And they got a thrill early in the ball game as Evans hit a three run homer in the first inning. Here's a strike. Daryl Evans. Who couldn't get it going in spring training and once the season opened he has turned it on. Did not hit a home run in all spring training. Opening day hit a three run shot in Minnesota. And the one here today excited and ignited this huge crowd. A one two pitch to Yost. Let me get two and two. You know, this is the second time up for Abbott in the bullpen. He might be coming in. He, he threw earlier in the game. And uh, now he's up again. Maybe the Sparky might say, Let's get an inning or so in from him. Ball two and strike two to Ned Yost. And the pitch from Petrie. Ooh, he almost got it by him. Somebody's going to have to hurry. What a play by Whitaker. He heard and he got him. That pitch was all the way by Yost when he swung at it. We'll look at it in a minute. And, you know, watch how he has to avoid the runner, too. You know the, the base runner has just as much right to that base path as Lou Whitaker. He had to wait for the base runner to get past him. That was a, a very tough play. He made it. That's two outs. The runner goes down to second and the batter will be Tolleson. Wayne Tolleson has struck out bounced to the mound. And a pitch high. Tigers five, Rangers one in the seventh inning. Petrie gave up a leadoff single to Ward. He's at second with two outs. Pitch is low and it's ball two and no strikes. Here's the Texas bullpen, Jim, Jim Bibby. And can he throw? Be a good time to bring him in with all these shadows. Ball Tough two, no strikes. Ball three. Well, right now, what Dan is doing when he's starting to release the ball, he's falling back. 
He's landing on his heel, and then when he when he's throwing the ball, he's falling back. That makes the ball go up high. He's not fo following through. He's behind Tolerson. Ball three, no strikes. And he walked it. Wayne Tolleson goes to first. Rangers have him at first and second. Two outs. Wilkerson is a scheduled batter, but he's not going to bat. We'll look at Petrie now, Al, what you're talking about here. Uh, he, he's just not staying down. He's following, you know, you see he's, he's standing straight up when he's throwing. And he's just not following through and bending that back. Keep it, keep the ball down. You have to, to hit on a uh, flex front knee. You cannot hit on a straight leg because that makes you uh, throw the ball up high. Roger Craig goes to the mound as Bobby Jones comes into the on deck circle to bat for Curtis Wilkerson. Bobby Jones a big left handed batter will bat for the shortstop with two on two outs in the seventh inning. And the Tigers lead by four. Gary Ward started this inning with a single. Petrie got the next two batters, O'Brien and Yost. And he walked Tolerson, and now he's got to get Bobby Jones. And the pitch. Gets it on the ground a second. That'll get him out of the inning as Whitaker comes up with it. And Petrie gets out of another jam as Bobby Jones hit the first pitch right straight to the second baseman. We go to the bottom of the seventh, the Tigers five, the Rangers one. Welcome. You've turned the city over to the next shift. The rest of the night is yours. Two Miller time. Now comes your time with the best beer you can find. Miller High Life. Bring your thirsty self right here. You've got the time we've got the beer. What you have in mind. Welcome to Miller Time. Your Metro Detroit Chevy dealer is taking charge. Chevy fever, Chevy power, Chevy style. Look beyond the ordinary. Gaze on reflections of driving pleasure. Capture the magic only Chevrolet creates with Camaro, Cavalier, and Celebrity. Chevy Fever. Coming at you. Chevy Power. Grabbing home. Chevy Style. Taking charge. Catch the fever. See your Metro Detroit Chevy dealers where today's Chevrolet is taking charge. Well, we have a new shortstop, George. Uh, Jim Anderson has gone in to uh, play shortstop for the Rangers. There he is. Uh, Utility infielder who plays shortstop, second base. Tigers need some more runs. They scored four times in the first inning, one time in the third, and they've been shut down by some pretty good relief pitching by the Rangers. They had a couple of runners aboard in the sixth inning against Henke, his first inning in relief, and he got Whitaker on a fly to center to end that threat. So it'll be Trammell to lead it off here in the seventh. Allen is looking for his first hit today. He has walked, scored a run, bounced to the first baseman, and fly deep into left field. And a pitch outside. Trammell, Evans, and Parrish, the Tigers batters in the seventh. This one in the upper deck. One ball, one strike. Don't forget now, tomorrow's an off day, but on Thursday, play will be resumed at Tiger Stadium, and Jack Morris will pitch against Frank Tanana. That should be a good matchup. Tiger fans will get their first chance to see Jack Morris at home this year and the first chance after his no hitter.
One ball, two strikes to Trammell. There's a line drive, base hit. He may try for two. Let's see. No, he'll hold up. Well, that Ranger outfield is very impressive, Al. They, they get to the ball quickly. Yeah, great speed. Uh, sample does not throw well. Alan Trammell, what an improved hitter over the beginning of last season. You can see how late he stays. He, he keeps his shoulders closed. He doesn't jump at the ball, and he is a much, much improved hitter. He said in spring training he felt like he was a big league hitter now. And he is. There's Darrell Evans. He had a three run homer in the first inning. He's bounced to second base twice since then. Tigers batting in the seventh, the runner at first with nobody out, and they lead by four. I tell you. Somebody's done some talking to these pitchers. They've told them they'll run. Stewart took a lot of time pitching with runners at first base. Pinky giving Trammell a long look. In Chicago, the Tigers just ran at will, especially on Tom Seaver. Alan Trammell has four stolen bases. Uh, he has now had a chance to look at. Pinkle and uh, he might just take off. He's gone on his way. Throw and he's out. Boy, Yost just made a perfect throw. Trammell had a good jump. And Yost made a perfect throw to get him right on the money. It had to be right on the money. The ball right at the bag. The second baseman does not have to move his glove. And you can see there Allen slid right into him. One ball, one strike to Darrell Evans. And a foul back makes it one and two. They're in the fifth inning in New York, and the Yankees lead 2 0 over Minnesota. A two run homer by Willie Randolph in the first inning. That's the home opener for the Yankees. They opened on the road in Kansas City. Then went to Texas. Ground ball to second. Evans is out. Out number two here in the seventh inning. And the batter will be Lance Perry. Lance is 0 for 3. Fouled out, struck out, bounced to third. He bats with two outs, nobody on. Big sweeping curveball. Final from Philadelphia. The Phillies three, the Houston Astros one. Makes it one and one to Parrish. We're in the seventh inning. The Tigers five, Texas one. Petrie has gone all the way. Dave Stewart started. Smith relieved him in the first inning. Then Hinky in the sixth. Ball two and strike one to Paris. We're going to get two and two to Lance. New York plays at Atlanta tonight. Montreal at Cincinnati tonight in the National League. Ball two, strike two. And he struck him out. Big sweeping curve, and Perry strikes out. Well, at the end of seven, it's still the Tigers five, the Rangers one.
you don't have much time. Starting Wednesday at 12 noon, Highland Appliance is having a spectacular nine-hour sale. Every Highland store will be closed Wednesday until noon to mark 5 to 40% off the price of every item in every Highland store. Then you'll have just nine hours to save. Wednesday from noon to 9 p.m. Hurry, time is running out. The Highland Appliance nine-hour sale. Everything you never expected from an appliance store. You can find it at Hudson's. We've got your kind of style. If it's one of a kind of new design, come in, look around for a while. in the eighth inning in Detroit. The Tigers five and the Rangers one. It'll be the top of the batting order for Texas. Billy Sample to lead off followed by Buddy Bell and then George Wright. Dan Petrie has gone all the way for the Tigers. Dave Stewart, Dave Smith and Tom Hinckley have been the pitchers for the Rangers. Doug Bear is now throwing in the Tiger bullpen along with Abbott. There's Billy Sample to lead it off. He has flied to left, flied to center, and popped to the second baseman. And the pitch coming up from Petrie. One ball, no strikes. A strike. He got the inside corner, makes it one and one. As Al told you, this fellow Billy Sample had a great minor league career, averaged some 358 in the minor leagues. And a strike. Parrish asking for the call from first base umpire, but Marty Springstead says, "I say it's a strike." Makes it one ball, two strikes. And he struck him out. He just threw it by him about a letter high, and Billy Sample strikes out. Well, a little help here. Uh, looked like he's looking for a ball out over the plate, and uh, Dan pulls him and throws a fastball inside. Do it right by him. That's his seventh strikeout, the first one he's had since the fourth inning. He had six at the end of four, except his seventh, leading off here in the eighth as Buddy Bell takes a strike. Buddy Bell had a single in the first inning and scored a run. Since then, he has struck out, bounced to the shortstop. Strike two. Buddy Bell, not too sure that was a strike. But Dan Petrie looked like he was laboring the first few pitches he threw to Sample, but uh, now all of a sudden uh, seems to have the groove back again. It's strike two to Buddy Bell, and a ball makes it one and two. Five runs on five hits for the Tigers, one run on three hits for the Rangers. As Dan Petrie gets ready. Fly ball into left. Harry Herndon waves everybody away. So Buddy Bell is out on a fly to left. Out number two in the eighth inning. And the batter will be George Wright. George has bounced to first, line to the second baseman, and Hit the ball sharply to the first baseman his last time up. He's batting with two outs, nobody on. And a pitch outside.
Petrie delivers fly ball to left. Here's Herndon coming in under. So Petrie gets some one, two, three in the eighth inning. We go to the bottom of the eighth, the Tigers five and the Rangers five. These two cars are practically identical. But this one just takes the kids to school, while this one over here sometimes pulls a trailer. That's why Midas carries different kinds of shock absorbers, including our new gas shocks that give you a smoother ride, even on the worst roads. At Midas, we've got the right shocks for every car and every driver. Just a Midas touch. Get three shocks installed at the regular price. Get the fourth one free through April at Midas. Look out! Here comes the semifinals on the Saturday Night Music Machine. Curtis Gatson introduces this year's eight winning performers. But which three will advance to the finals? Who's the best? Will your favorite be one of the lucky three? Find out how your vote will decide. Hot music, hot dancing, and loaded with extras. The Saturday Night Music Machine semifinals at 7.30, right here on Channel 4. Well, we have two changes for Texas. The new catcher is Foley, Marv Foley. And Big Jim Bibby is uh, pitching for the Rangers now. Uh, Jim is not listed in the Ranger press guide, but know a lot about this fellow. Pitched for in the Nas National League for a long time with Pittsburgh. He was in the American League for several years. Hard throwing right hander. You can see what tremendous size. Uh, his biggest problems over the year has been his control. It takes a long time to deliver the ball, and uh, if we should happen, if the Tigers should happen to get men on base, he's a real good man to steal on. Al, they just announced the attendance: fifty-one thousand two hundred thirty-eight at Tiger Stadium on this opening day. Gibson, the batter. And he tried to check it and he couldn't. It's one strike to Gibby. Gibson has had a hit today in three trips. He leads off here in the eighth for the Tigers. And a pitch outside makes it one and one. Jim Bibby the pitcher and Marv Foley the catcher a new battery here in the eighth inning for the Rangers. Ground ball slowly toward second. And Gibson is out. He hit him right on the fist. And Gibby rolled it down to second. One out in the eighth inning, and the batter is Herndon, who has walked, doubled, and flied to right. Don't forget on Thursday, will be the next ball game at Tiger Stadium. Jack Morris will go against Frank Tanana. Pitch is low. One ball, no strikes. Larry Herndon batting with one out, nobody on. And a strike makes it one and one. We're in the eighth. After a wild and woolly first inning, it has settled down to a only one run being scored since then. Pitch is high. Ball two, strike one. Rangers have three hits. The Tigers have five. Ball in tight. Ball three, strike one. Bibby throws hard as Al Kaline told you. He's had some control problems down through the years, but he brings it at you. Ball three, strike one. And he walked him. Larry Herndon gets his second walk today. He's at first, one out, and the batter will be Bergman. Dave's had a base hit, and he batted in a run with that base hit. 
He's one for three. Pitches low to Bergman. One ball, no strikes. Runner at first, one out. And then goes back, hit first. And a strike. He got it over about knee high. Makes it one and one to Bergman. Jim Bibby is the pitcher as he looks into his catcher Marv Foley. Breaking ball is low. Ball two strike one. Tigers got four runs in the first inning. They picked up one more in the third and that's been it. Rangers got one in the first. Two strike one. This is foul. Evens the count at two and two. Bergman's base hit was a line drive to right that drove in Herndon from second. Herndon at double just in front of him. Now he bats with Larry at first base and one out. It's a ball two and a strike two count. And the pitch. There goes the runner. He struck him out and throws. Our throw. Foley put the throw right on the bag, but a head first slide by Herndon, and he has a stolen base. Yeah, Bergman goes for a bad pitch. Uh, looked like a very close play down at second base. You be the judge. Ball looks like it's there in plenty of time, and uh, they call him safe. Take another look at it from another angle, and did look like he might have been out. Might have been out. He's at second with two outs, and the batter is Chet Lemon. Pitches high to Lemon. One ball, no strikes. Chet's 0 for 1. He has walked today. He's been hit by a pitch ball and he has bounced to third base. He bats with Herndon at second, two outs in the eighth inning. Bibby gets ready. And a pitch in close. Ball two, no strikes. Two and out of Lemon. He's trying to get the runner in from second as Bibby looks in. Bouncing ball to deep short. Here's the long throw. And Lemon is out. So the Tigers put a runner at second, failed to score, and at the end of eight, Detroit five, Texas one. J.C. Penny and Levi's have gotten together to bring you quality sportswear for the games we play. 
like men's hooded crew neck sweatshirts, pants, and shorts in fleecy cotton or polyester blend. Men's sport shirts, t-shirts, and pull-on pants with Olympic graphics in popular colors at prices that earn a gold medal for value. J.C. Penny and Levi's. Together. You know, the business world moves fast. I found only one publication keeps pace with it every business day. Only this, the Wall Street Journal. Not weekly, not bi-weekly. Today's business news today. So you can use it today. Get all the business news you need when you need it. Get the Wall Street Journal delivered for six months for $53. Phone toll-free 800-228-3131. That's six months, $53. Delivered every business day. Phone 800-228-3131. Subscribe now. A spas 10 seconds for station identification. You're watching Tigers 84. Now join Mort Krim and Carmen Harlan for a complete report on opening day 1984. That's on News 4 at 5.30 tonight here on Channel 4. We're in the ninth inning. The Tigers lead it 5-1. to one. Larry Parrish will lead it off, followed by... Gary Ward and then Pete O'Brien. And a pitch low. Parrish has had a hit today. He batted in a run in the first inning. One for three for the big guy. He hits it to third. Brookins picks it off. So Parrish is out. Tommy Brookins on over to Bergman. And the batter will be Gary Ward. Gary Ward has struck out, walked, and singled. He's one for two. Ninth inning in Detroit on opening day. Well, it's been a great day. The weatherman co cooperated. It's been a very pleasant day here at Tiger Stadium. He says it's going to be good throughout the week. And the Tigers and Rangers play again on Thursday. Fly ball, it's curving foul. This should reach the seats, and it will. Oh, he's got it. A kid in the glove made a well of a catch. Give him a contract. Give him a contract. In the old ballpark, it's really looking in great shape. Oh, the ballpark looks better, Al, than I've ever seen it. Absolutely. The old ballpark looks great. The strike one pitch to Ward it is low and it's one and one. Ninth inning, one out, nobody on. Tigers five, Rangers one. And Petrie's trying to wrap it up. Pitch is over but high and it's ball two. Yankees two, Minnesota nothing in the sixth inning. There's a base hit over the head of Whitaker in the right center field. Gary Ward gets his second hit. So a one out single by Ward keeps it going here in the ninth. And the batter is Pete O'Brien. This left handed hitter has struck out, walked, and flied to left field. Well, the Tiger bullpen is going uh, full blast, and you would expect Lopez, the right-hander, and Hernandez, the left-hander. A strike on the outside corner to O'Brien. This is Marv Foley in the on-deck circle. One strike to O'Brien. And the pitch. Outside makes it one and one. You've got to figure, Al, that Sparky won't go too long no. with Petrie here in the night. I wouldn't be surprised if uh, this hitter should happen to get on and he goes with a, a new pitcher. One ball, one strike. Ball two. The pitch was low and inside, and it's ball two, strike one. Be 
We got the first batter of this inning, Parrish, on a bounce out and a single to Ward. And the pitch coming up to O'Brien. And a line drive, base hit into right. Parrish caught. Gibson caught it about knee high. Good play by Gibson. That ball carried extremely well. And Gibby came right on to get it. I think he kind of surprised the ball got out there that fast. Gibby with a tremendous speed. Looks like the ball is going to drop in, but he just outruns the ball. And not to labor on the fact again, but that's a terrible sun field in right field right now. Just a fine play by Gibson. And that probably kept Petrie in the ball game. A line shot into right, and Gibby picked it off about knee high. And the batter is Mar Foley. He's batting for the first time. And he hits it foul right at the plate. I don't know about that now. Perry says, wait a minute. Okay. He's giving an explanation to the Tiger bench that the ball hit Foley. If it did not and had a roll fair, it would have been a fair ball, but he grabbed it quickly. Mar Foley batting with a runner at first, two outs. Ned Yost batted three times in the game before Foley got in in the eighth inning. Pitch is low and it's one and one. One ball, one strike. Ninth inning at Tiger Stadium. A runner at first with two outs and the Tigers lead by four. Petrie trying to get him out here in the ninth. This is a fair ball fielded by Bergman. A good play by Bergman. Ball was hit hard just inside the bag. Bergman picked it up, stepped on the bag, and Dan Petrie has gone all the way as the Tigers win it 5-1, to one, and we'll be right back. As a relief pitcher, everybody thought I had it easy. See Pat here? He'd pitch his heart out for eight innings or so, and then, then I'd come, come in, toss three or four pitches, and walk away with a win. But I had to, had to just... train just like the rest of us. Yeah, well, I still like to keep in shape, and I drink drinks light, light beer. beer from Miller. See, light's less, less filling, and light really, really tastes great. Will you just let me finish? Why? You never let me finish. <laughs> like beer from Miller. Everything you always wanted in a beer, and less. Let me finish that for you, Sparky. Oh. <laughs> When you shop for carpet, you want well-trained, knowledgeable salespeople. You expect it. You're entitled to it. You get it at New York Carpet World. With your carpet installation, you want professional perfection. You expect it. You're entitled to it. And you get it at New York Carpet World. With all that, you might not expect the lowest price. But that's our aim. It's our creed, our policy, our single goal. The lowest price on every carpet every single day. This Trevira carpet, $6.99. Unbeatable. See us for what you want in carpet. You can't miss at New York Carpet World. More Saki Bubasama? The WRIF 1984 World Concert Tour continues. With me, Arthur P. Riff and Northwest Orient Airlines want to send you to Tokyo, Japan to see Detroit's own romantics live in concert. From now until April 13th, when Bubasan gives you the word, be the third caller at 298-6360 for one of three week-long trips for two to Tokyo, including round-trip air furnished by Northwest Orient, hotel, concert tickets, and 88,000 yen spending money. Be listening to Riff for your chance to invade Japan with the Grand Bubasan. I'll show you why a professional likes Reynolds quality plastic wrap. For starters, it handles like a dream. Next, try this test at home. Reynolds plastic wrap and the leading brand. Reynolds holds its shape better, and that gives Reynolds its super tight cling. Try wrapping both halves of an onion. Set your timer for five minutes and see for yourself. For better cling, try Reynolds quality plastic wrap. The plastic wrap professional juice. Well, Darrell Evans provided the fireworks with an early three-run homer in the first inning. Dan Petrie provided the pitching as he went all the way to beat the Rangers 5-1 to one here today. Five runs, five hits, no errors for the Tigers. Petrie the winner. He's won two, lost none. One run, four hits, no errors for 
Texas. Dave Stewart takes the loss. He's 0-2 on the year. Well, that's it from Tiger Stadium for Al Kaline, Eli Zarrett, and Al Ackerman. This is George Kell, hoping you'll be with us again on Sunday, April 15th at 1.30 when the Tigers face the Boston Red Sox. The senior producer of Tigers 84 is Chuck Wosley. Today's game was produced by Toby Tabasinski. Our coordinating director was George Christensen. Our production assistants by Michael Andrew and Sue Ganzek. Once again, the final score today, the Tigers 5, Texas 1. Today's game was brought to you by Miller High Life, the best beer for the best part of the day. Welcome to Miller Time by Chevrolet. America is on the move and Chevrolet is supplying the wheels. Chevrolet and you taking charge by your local McDonald's restaurants, a proud sponsor of the 1984 Olympics. By First of America, with over 200 offices across Michigan, working together to be first. And by America's largest carpet retailer, New York Carpet World, the better carpet people. Dudley Rabbit here. It's Easter egg coloring time again, so I want...